So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Reddington Fortinet virtual session. Today's topic we have from Fortinet on Fortinet Secure Access Technologies. The session will be delivered by Fortinet Senior Systems Engineer, Mohammad Rafiq. In case you have any questions during the session, I would request you to please put in all your queries in the Q&A tab and Rafiq will be able to answer all your questions towards the end of the session. Also joining us today in the session, we have Malik and Ravi from Reddington who will also be helping in answering all your queries. So Rafiq, over to you. Thank you, Vindya. Uh, good morning, everyone, once again. Hope you all are doing well. So quickly to start with our today's topic, I want to uh, you know review the agenda today once again our agenda for today's session so uh, on a high level we are going to cover the secure access wireless solution offering this we are where we are going to talk about the integrated platform controller and cloud onboarding so uh, different management platforms when it comes to wireless solution offering then uh, uh, similarly we have uh, secure Fortinet Secure Switching Solution Overview, where we are going to cover uh, the deployment modes, the uh, management possibilities, or uh, you know, deployment options with uh, secure switching. And then we will move on to the FortiWise Unified Communication uh, to introduce you FortiWise uh, IPPBX solutions, the different uh, uh, gateways that are available with Fortinet Wise Telephony solu Solution, along with different types of or different models of um, IP phones uh, that that can be uh, you know uh, used as a and, uh, desk phones right and then uh, we have uh, when it comes to the physical security uh, we we will also talk about the physical security aspect where uh, we will introduce you to the 40 cameras uh, 40 recorder the components of uh, IP surveillance system so that that also covers the uh, uh, 40 recorder which is a centralized uh, solution along with uh, uh, an application that can be installed on your client devices. And then once uh, uh, you know we are cover or we are briefly cover the solution overview, then we will move on to the uh, quick demo. Uh, for sure, we will not be able to demonstrate all the features and capabilities uh, in terms of deployment modes. But what we could do is we can uh, you know take one one of the uh, you know aspect of deployment, maybe a controller uh, wireless solution, uh, and then we move on to the switching and forty voice and recorder, so on. Uh, you know, depending on the uh, time availability then uh, then based on that uh, we will go with the flow and uh, you know uh, and then uh, we can uh, continue with the question and answer session so once we are done uh, pro probably I, I will review your questions if uh, if uh, you know uh, uh, if you feel free to type your qu um, uh, uh, questions in the chat window <clears throat> So before we begin with the secure access technologies, I want to just give you a, qu a quick overview or uh, you know uh, the market drivers uh, that we are seeing uh, from a customer requirement point, point of view. So there are three key different market drivers that are enforcing or uh, that are uh, you know forcing our customers to refresh their switching and wireless infrastructure. Mainly, they are improved coverage in coverage in terms of. Uh, you know, uh, securing them because one of the key vector today is your access uh, layer where, you know, this, this access layer has become the broadest surface uh, for any cyber attack. So keeping that in mind, you know, customers are looking for securing their access layer because uh, uh, the phenomenon of, uh, you know, uh, the BYOD came into the existing now. We, people are coming with a lot of growth, a lot of IoT devices connecting to the network. So today, if we see the number of devices connected are uh, you know around 25 billion devices connected uh, uh, um, uh, on the cloud and then uh, if moving on uh, the network has become more and more complex so uh, keeping all these things in mind uh, looking at the security at access layer and the growth to address the customer requirement in terms of handling the capacity in terms of handling the growth uh, onboarding different type of devices on the network right uh, and different protocols uh, uh, on their network so customers are looking for growth in in terms of capacity on the access layer platform then the third and key important uh, aspect of uh, simplicity in terms of management where they are looking for the solutions where they have ease of management whether uh, the user is connected to a wired platform or wireless uh, to give a consistent or uniform user experience when they are connected to the network. So including your VPN connectivity, so users connecting from VPN. So basically, the customers are looking to have a 
uh, a uniform security policies implemented across wired wireless and VPN platforms. <clears throat> so let's have a quick look at the Wi-Fi evolution. Since Wi-Fi was first uh, released to consumers in 1997, right? Uh, the Wi-Fi standard have been continuously evolving. That is basically, typically, if you see the uh, you know uh, main aspect of uh, the evolution of Wi-Fi, it is mainly the need of speed. So we we are seeing that the speed has, uh, uh, if, as you move on from 802.11, uh, 802.11, then you, if you move on to B, A, and uh, so on. So what what you see the different is data rates the number of uh, you know the 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 speed that we support on these platforms are, are rapidly increasing. So today approximately on AX platform uh, we are talking about a, a, you know uh, a data uh, rate or the speed of uh, approximately 9.6 or close to 10 Gbps on wireless network. Uh, and uh, apart from that, not only that, uh, um, uh, and when we introduce the the uh, you know when there has uh, there has been a lot of enhancement done along with the amendment right they call it with different names as we refer to 802.11 bg and and so on right in 9 in 2008 the wi-fi alliance took a, uh, steps to make wi-fi standard names much easier to identify so today we you see uh, people calling 802.11 ax as generation 5 or wi-fi 6 uh, or as a standard but uh, and not only this, in uh, they also renamed Generation Five, uh, which means uh, your 802.11 AC and 802.11 N, uh, with uh, Generation Wi uh, Wi-Fi Five and Wi-Fi Four respectively. All right, so let's look at the key te uh, technology, uh, you know, uh, building blocks towards 802.11 AC, A sorry AX, uh, where what enhancement has been done uh, when, when it comes to 802.11 AX, right? So it's mainly uh, support for 8x8, uh, MoMIMO for, with downlink and uplink, then OFTM support on downlink and uplink. Uh, it can also uh, allow you or uh, enables link resource scheduling. Uh, and if you see um, the OFDM support is long compared to uh, AC. And uh, when it comes to modulation, uh, 802.11 AX supports uh, QAM uh, 1024 uh, modulation and extended range, along with support on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz with uh, more and more uh, special streams, and also allows you to do uh, BSS color coding um, on 802.11 uh, AX platform. <clears throat> So 802.ax uh, platform basically it improves uh, you know uh, average throughput per user in a dense environment by four times. One of the biggest enabler for this efficiency is where you have more and more devices connecting more and more devices along with uh, multi-user multi-user MIMO and multi-multi-user on OFDM. So let's have a quick look at uh, uh, the comparison between 802.11 AC and AX platform. So if the main main difference you can uh, uh, see in the frequency band where 802.11 AC supports only at five giga uh, five gigahertz, whereas uh, 802.11 AX supports on both uh, 2.4 as well as five gigahertz band. And 802.11 AX works on uh, um, basically uh, or or it introduces OFDM, which is orthogonal frequency division mul uh, multiple access. Uh, this basically helps uh, you to reduce the amount of interference from neighboring wireless uh, uh, networks. The main advantage of over uh, uh, 802.11 AC for AX is basically the higher data rates, the capacity, improved capacity. This means now you can have double the capacity or more and more devices connecting to AX platform. And if, if you see the number of uh, uh, you know multi-user support uh, in a AC was only about four users, whereas in AX, we can go up to um, eight users with a downlink and uplink uh, support. So uh, when it comes to 14-net uh, wireless access, it's an entire uh, uh, world when it comes to solution offering. So you can see we have different types of access points, starting with 40 APs, 40 APU, 40 APS, 40 APC. Uh, then moving on to FWF 40 Wi-Fi regulatory domain. So le let's talk about each one of them uh, on a high level. So when I refer to the 40 APs, there are access points, 40 net access points. They are named as 40 APs. They can be managed through 
your 40 gate firewalls and they can be managed uh, over the 40 cloud when you refer to 40 apu basically you represents your universal platform yeah, which means you can manage 40 APs on all the platforms, uh, all the management platforms that Fortinet offers. Then we also have a secure Fortinet access point. So that's basically uh, for the customers who are looking for a more secure wired, wireless environment where they don't, don't have a, a 40 gate, uh, a 40 gate firewalls to integrate or possibly remote locations or distributed architect where uh, customers want to have uh, all the UTM features on a, on a wireless platform. And FAPC, uh, that's basically uh, a, a 11 AC standard of uh, access point. Then moving on to 40 Wi-Fi, uh, 40 uh, Wi-Fi is uh, there. There are different models of 48 firewalls that has built-in wireless. Uh, so for, for instance, uh, 40 40 uh, F Wi-Fi. So that has a 40 gate along with Wi-Fi built-in. So anything which represents FWF that represents 40 Wi-Fi. 40 gate with a built-in wireless radio interface. So you can have basically for a small deployments where customers are uh, for a, for a small deployments where customers are looking for a UTM or a firewall along with a Wi-Fi uh, one access point. Then you can replace that 180 re requirement with 40 uh, uh, FWF model where 40 FWF uh, can act as a wireless access point along with a uh, UTM or firewall uh, uh, appliance. And regulatory domains, yes, we do follow regulatory domains uh, depending on the country uh, we ship our access points. So, uh, for instance, Saudi Arabia uh, needs a 40 uh, AP suffix, which is E uh, as an alphabet. Uh, if we are shipping the same access point, uh, same AP model to, for, for instance, uh, to Kuwait, then uh, we probably follow the regulatory domain to meet the uh, uh, local uh, regu regulatory domain requirements, which is uh, alphabet I. So de depending on that, we have different uh, regulatory domain, uh, or if you see our SKUs, the AP model ends with a different suffix. Basically, this suffix represents, uh, you know, the support uh, supported regulatory domains uh, for the respective country. And then uh, we, we do have 40 presence analytics solution. We'll talk about that in detail. Uh, and when it comes to authentication uh, on, on the wireless platform, uh, we do have uh, uh, our radius solutions. Where, where one of them are 40 Connect, which is uh, which can act as a radius server, which has a nice, uh, uh, fully customizable captive portal functionality with integration with social media platform, SMS gateway integration. Apart from that, we also have 40 Authenticator, which has similar functionality along with. Additionally, what uh, what uh, you have is two-factor authentication uh, on 40 uh, Authenticator uh, along with. Uh, uh, certificate uh, or uh, digital certificate based authentication where 40 uh, 40 authenticator can act as a ca certificate authority server then uh, when it comes to uh, pre sales activity uh, we we do have 40 planner as an application tool which uh, helps you to do the predictive site survey so if you want to plan for any predictive uh, 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 design so you you could actually import the floor plans on 40 planner and place the respective AP model that you have in mind to uh, position here to your customer and uh, prepare a heat map report. So uh, you can generate the heat map report. Along with that, it also allows you to do the post implementation survey where once you are done with your design and the, uh, and the deployment is done. If you want to go back and uh, review your deployment or you want to do a uh, post implementation survey, survey, that can also be carried out using 40 planner tool. And uh, when, when it comes to antenna offering, we have different types of antennas, like uh, sector antennas, directional antennas, indoor antennas, outdoor antennas, with different combinations, uh, single band, dual band, uh, respectively, depending on what customer is looking for, uh, or what is the use case, uh, or what applications they want, uh, you know, depending on, uh, or, or if you're deploying for in a high density environment, then, uh, uh, then th that requires a special antenna. So depending on uh, what, what we need, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the components uh, in a nutshell. What is required for a, uh, for a wireless solution? So where we stand uh, in Gartner's magic quadrant, if you see our position in 2018 and 2019. So uh, I, I'm really glad to see this uh, change happening. We we are moving ahead. So if you see under niche player, we are uh, uh, the uh, a major player here, or or the we are the uh, topper in uh, niche players uh, vendor list. If you compare, if you go back and look the uh, 
uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant for 2017, even we were lower. So I, I see that there is a consistent uh, improvement in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the product, in terms of our our ranking uh, our, in, in Gartner umbrella, right? And uh, and if you look at uh, uh, business opportunities in wireless segment, uh, wireless market is expected to grow by 5.96 billion in 2017 and about 15.6 billion by 2020, which is approximately about 21% uh, growth. Whereas if you look at the network security firewall market, that is, uh, you know, between uh, a duration of 2018 and 2023, which is expected to grow only by 12.2%. Uh, and uh, no wonder uh, you you uh, when you uh, participate in any wireless opportunity or you are working on any wireless deal you are facing a lot of competition no uh, no doubt uh, it uh, wireless has become a commodity business now every vendor every other vendor has a wireless solution today to offer uh, but but what uh, differentiates fortinet or uh, you know uh, how you can position or how you can uh, uh, leverage uh, uh, your deal basically you can take the advantage uh, of a Fortinet wireless uh, integration with Security Fabric, whether it's an integrated platform or if you are introducing controller platform, both the platforms, they fully integrate with Security Fabric. So you can go and communicate to your customer uh, and talk about the Security Fabric integration from a wireless segment. Additionally, uh, you know, uh, the other key, key uh, um, aspect or, uh, you know, um, a Fortinet's advantage when it comes to SD brand solution offering. So, uh, if you see a competition, we can easily uh, uh, win over uh, or win against our competition when you offer SD brand solutions where you have a FortiGate firewall uh, uh, and switches from Fortinet and access points. So, basically, <coughs> allowing your customers to have single pane of management managing uh, your branch location from a FortiGate uh, firewall. So uh, additionally, you can also have a centralized deployment options where uh, all your branch locations uh, from a SD uh, branch point of view can be managed from a centralized location. You can have a template-based configuration through Forti Manager. You can have, uh, or you can offer PCA compliant reporting or a detailed reporting from Forti Analyzer. You can also have a IOC indication of compromised component to uh, see if there are any devices <coughs> who are already compromised and connected to your network or a piece of uh, network access control can be introduced here where uh, to uh, profile or onboard or gain visibility of your endpoint devices. <clears throat> so not only that, uh, uh, you know, uh, additionally, if you look at uh, different needs, different architecture. So when you look at from a customer requirement point of view, there could be a customer who's looking for, uh, you know, customers, your customers looking for teleworker, especially today. We, uh, in these days with, uh, uh, you know, customers are uh, uh, offering or enterprise uh, users are working from home. So you can on, uh, you can offer teleworker solutions, starting from teleworker solution, then moving on to different uh, requirement from a, a different customer uh, point of, uh, uh, you know, vertical point of view. So maybe uh, it's a small branch office or a regional office then moving on to a retail or a warehouse requirement. But then apart from that, you also have a really high dense environment. So you can see the capacity from starting with a teleworker where a teleworker could be a one user connecting from home, moving on to the university where thousands of users with uh, thousands of devices connecting to the wireless infrastructure. So when, when you have this, the uh, uh, you know the flow is basically when you have a lower the density, the lower the complexity. But if you have higher number of devices, that means you're going to have more and more complex environment when you are introducing thousands of access points to manage your thousands of uh, wireless client devices. So it is much easier when you have a small number of access points to manage and deploy. But uh, it really uh, you know, uh, makes a huge difference when you have really uh, high density uh, deployments or challenging environments uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, uh, typically uh, at, um, uh, complex RF uh, uh, environments when you're deploying for uh, such large deployments. 
So looking at the customer, uh, uh, you know, different use case or different uh, solution architects, we can definitely say that, yes, one size does not fit for all. Uh, take an example, we can't really tell a customer that, okay, we only have a controller-based solution. If you want to on, uh, allow your customers to connect from home, then let the customer have a, con uh, let a teleworker have a controller and an access point installed at home, but that's not possible, that's not doable. But it's same case if you have, uh, let's say, a distributed architect where customer needs three to five access points per site, but we can't sell a controller platform to go along with three or four, five access points. Same uh, applies when you have thousands of devices, we don't want to manage them uh, you know, over a cloud, but instead uh, the preferred mode of deployment is uh, on-premise controller-based platform where you can centrally manage all the devices so let's let's look at the different uh, uh, use cases so integrated when we refer to the integrated that allows you to uh, do a single pane of management uh, and uh, one one box solution where you can use your existing customer uh, firewall to act as a wireless LAN controller and you can gain or take advantage of uh, hardware acceleration on on the ASIC chipset, uh, chipset of 40 net uh, devices uh, along with uh, the uh, award winning 40 guard service protection on the wireless platform uh, a plus large multi site uh, network deployments for uh, multiple locations uh, to, uh, and uh, you can position this or you can offer this solution for all the sensitive verticals uh, or all the sensitive customers uh, apart from that, uh, you know, you can have a, a single pane of uh, deployments to 40 manager uh, where in, in case of distributed or multi-site uh, deployments. And <clears throat> controller-based deployments, in, in, uh, in case of controller-based deployments, as I referred earlier, it's a very specific uh, to the vertical where customers are looking for uh, possibly, uh, you know, if you're going with a healthcare where you, your healthcare needs a certification um, uh, from Dragger, uh, uh, right? Or if you're going for a <coughs> manufacturing plant where things are a relatively open area where one AP could see all the neighboring access points. So such large deployments are customers who, who wants to deploy or who wants to run voice applications over wireless. So that could be one of the use cases where you, you are, we are going to propose wireless LAN controller solution, but don't lead the uh, you know communication if, uh, existing partners who knows the virtual cell story so don't just go or depend on virtual cell uh, you know uh, point of uh, solution approach but it can also do a native cell deployment on 40 net wireless LAN controller that we are going to see that du uh, during the demo and uh, this has a sim uh, simplified centralized wi-fi management uh, and moving on to the 40 AP cloud. So this allows you to do the ease of deployment. Uh, basically, uh, there's no controller, uh, on-premise controller or a 40 gate. So your controller is hosted on the cloud. Uh, and it, it, I mean, when it comes to the management, it's, uh, it's a cloud-based management, 40 cloud-based management, and there is no, uh, you know, uh, no licensing is required uh, and no on-premise controllers required. So just what you need is a 40 AP. That which is registered under your 40 cloud account. <coughs> so uh, additionally, now let's take, uh, you know, uh, we have seen that three different platform, solution platform, but additionally, when I, uh, you know, focus towards integrated platform, so you can take advantage if you compare any enterprise grade customer controllers today in the market, they hardly uh, offer you Features like what we offer on on a con integrated platform. Features like integrate natively integration with SD WAN deployments, uh, built-in fa fabric connectors on, on your wireless LAN controller, packet capture, uh, other uh, features like traffic shaping, uh, and advanced routing features uh, along with uh, web filtering or UTM filtering. Plus the deployment mode on across the platforms. Whether uh, you know uh, you want to have them um, uh, and this on a hardware appliance based controller on on a vm platform or it could be uh, on a cloud platform uh, almost all the cloud uh, platforms are supported so it's a uh, it's a choice of a customer <clears throat> where they want to deploy or host the controller additionally uh, on a firewall uh, so, you know if, if you compare again uh, 14 net wireless integrated platform and other solutions in the market or our competitors uh, uh, you know what they can do in terms of solution offering when it comes to uh, our advantage 
we have uh, built in rogue ap monitoring you know, additional features advanced advanced wireless lan features are within the 40 gate firewall so if you see uh, features like ids intrusion uh, um, uh, detection and then uh, uh, you can have uh, uh, block intra ssid traffic so uh, the communication between two hosts connected on a same ssid and then uh, you can also limit the number of uh, stations uh, per ssid wi-fi client monitoring so ba basically you have all the advanced tools uh, ad advanced wireless uh, uh, enterprise tools within the integrated platform yes, we do sir, support sir. VLAN sorry and some of the integrated features uh, i mean these are uh, uh, i'm definitely i'm not going to go by uh, line by line but uh, you can quickly have a look at the features uh, these are uh, most commonly any enterprise grade controller that you look uh, you know features that you look at uh, in the market today so uh, we do support uh, multi pre shared key we we do support uh, fast failover between the con for controller redundancy other features like uh, deployment mode we do offer uh, tunnel bridge and uh, mesh mode deployments we do have uh, remote access points we we do support uh, client fingerprinting uh, to know that type of os running on endpoint device which is connected uh, behind the wireless so a uh, lot of uh, uh, you know enterprise grade uh, um, uh, features uh, uh, you can see or you can find on a in, on integrated platform itself and moving on to the universal access point, just to remind you again, uh, you know, uh, uh, universal uh, on a universal access point platform, the APs can be deployed uh, or can be uh, uh, used across all the three management platforms of Fortinet, including integrated uh, controller and cloud, which means you can have a universal AP managed by a FortiGate or you can have the same AP managed by a centralized on-premise controller or we can use the same universal access point to be managed over 40 cloud so it's a it's a choice of deployment or let's take in a, in another way where you have a customer who is currently looking with a mid uh, mid size of deployment with possibly uh, you know uh, a 50 access points but uh, tomorrow there is a plan to grow and customer uh, uh, you know uh, has a mindset or the customer is expecting uh, relatively a high density you know, within the customer environment and planning to move or uh, or move from integrated or cloud to the controller platform. So the best choice is if you go and approach with a universal access point, uh, any, any given time if customer is growing the size of uh, uh, the client density is growing at customer side, then customer can choose a mode of deployment by just adding a controller and they can start managing uh, universal APs from a controller platform. <clears throat> so <clears throat> basically, uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, too flexible in terms of solution offering, starting with, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if customers are looking from one AP to mid-size to large deployments with a controller-based uh, deployments. And as a reminder, uh, we have got uh, you know three platforms again: uh, integrated controller and 40 cloud uh, from a different uh, uh, management point of view, uh, while as AP management point of view. Some of the uh, you know uh, 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 other things like that we need to consider in terms of our positioning. Uh, uh, you know when you are working on a project, so. Uh, one of the thing uh, when you want to decide on what is the best solution approach or what do you need to propose to your customer one of the key factor sure, always sure. depends uh, Sahara, they will pay by end of this on. week once we get the money we, we can start the billing yes they after yes they after tomorrow thursday actually confirmed to me okay uh, and they have yes yes yes, yes. they will bring it here yeah. Okay, uh, regarding the BMB, uh, uh, you know, the go with the controller platform. As they me today morning, uh, the guy is there today. Uh, this week we will get the advice. I think Malik, uh, Malik, can you please mute yourself? Yeah, yeah, no issue with the hack now, all, all the issues are there. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Rafiq, I, can, I think you can continue now.
Rafiq, are you there? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, you can continue. I guess Malik was on mute. I think you can continue now. If you want to manage, hello, hi, Rafi. Yeah, uh, Rafi, sorry, we are not able to hear your voice clearly. One second, uh, Ravi, can you confirm if you can hear Rafi? Not right now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Yeah. Yes, better. Clear? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, it's no. It's... All right. So uh, just few positioning examples, uh, you know, just to, uh, uh, you know, since you are not able to hear me, uh, I just want to uh, go back to the slide uh, in, in terms of, you know, if let's say if you are participating on an RFP where a customer has uh, uh, so a competition has already worked with the customer and they help customer to draft the RFP. Right. In such cases, what we can do is you can go back. Uh, to the customer or you can go back to uh, you know uh, when you go back to the customer you can definitely uh, challenge them with uh, our integrated platform with security fabric approach where uh, you know uh, you can leverage the integration of wireless platform with fortinet security fabric uh, then uh, in terms of number of site deployment cloud uh, uh, on on the cloud there is no limit as such in terms of number of uh, access point support on a cloud platform uh, and uh, integrated can be, uh, uh, you know, okay, can be one of the use case per site deployment or centralized for centralized management. In case of per site deployment, let's say your customer has uh, existing access points, uh, sorry, existing 40 gate firewalls in most of the locations, then you can only introduce 40 APs that needs to be managed by existing 40 gate uh, appliance. And uh, on a controller platform, you, you know, where you have relatively high density. Uh, and um, uh, tough RF conditions, or, or RF environments, we can introduce a controller-based platform. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, controller uh, platform approach, where you want to introduce controller uh, at every site, customer site, in a distributed uh, deployment, uh, I mean, that, that doesn't make sense because it's going to cost you a lot. And moving on, uh, number of APs per site, uh, uh, in, in a distributed, again, uh, there is no limit if you are managing them over the cloud. Integrated, that can manage up to 4,096 in a tunnel mode deployment. If you, are, if you are deploying the APs in a bridge mode, that can scale up to 8,192. So if, if, I, if you look at for a controller, controller has capacity starting with entry model 50 uh, access point and can grow up to 3,000 APs uh, by uh, support by a centralized controller model. So uh, number of clients, basically cloud, there is no limit. Integrated has no limit again, but uh, WLC depends on uh, the size of the controller model. So we, we will look into that, uh, you know, when we see the sizing of our controller or, or the products that are uh, our controller models that are uh, available in Fortinet's controller family. So this is a quick look at, uh, you know, the increased capacity, the number of uh, uh, AP support increased on our new hardware. So if you look at uh, 40 gate, 
FWF40 uh, uh, or 40-gate uh, device. We support now the new limit for number of AP support uh, is about 16 number of access point. Moving on 80, uh, you know, which is uh, from 632, it is increased to 64 now. So uh, same way, 40-gate 39 uh, uh, 100, uh, 100 series. Uh, firewall will support up hello Rafiq again uh, we can't hear you Hello, Rafiq. We are still not able to hear your voice. Rafiq? Ravi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we, we can, can hear, hear you now. Yes. Okay. Sorry, guys, for the interruption. Looks like I have some issue with my microphone. I change it quickly. <clears throat> so, uh, if you look at the traditional access layer approach, uh, you know uh, there are multiple points of product, uh, point point of products or solutions that we are trying to integrate. So, traditional approach is on access layer is patchwork together where a series of solutions uh, from different vendors are trying to uh, work together as a result uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, in general uh, this rarely gives you a good result uh, uh, and those who are trying to manage them it's a diff complexity because they need to have uh, expertise on managing different uh, you know platform so uh, uh, combining everything makes uh, your life si simpler or easier where you have a single pane of management for a firewall which does the switching and wireless uh, integrated on a same firewall platform. So where, where you can see uh, all the other uh, functionalities or uh, you know uh, point of uh, uh, solution features are integrated in one. So 40 gate can have uh, your uh, web filtering, application control, VPN uh, and, and so on. 
if within the 40 gate of punch and we can have a single pane of management here and same time uh, your customer can actually um, have the lower cost of ownership or um, or lower cost of uh, operational cost in in, in overall So uh, let's quickly look at the topology uh, uh, or the deployment mode. So what do you see here, uh, you know, uh, uh, a typical deployment uh, uh, in an integrated platform where you have uh, 40 switches uh, which are uh, connected uh, behind the 40 gate firewall and access points are connected to your switch where uh, uh, the APs are sourcing power from your POE switch ports. Uh, and if you see the traffic flow, your data traffic, control traffic, and management traffic is forwarded to a centralized controller, which is your 40 gate UTM appliance acting as a wireless LAN controller in this case. So uh, all your traffic is forwarded to the 40 gate appliance, and then from there it is forwarded to the uh, you know to the next gateway or to the next uh, uh, next hop. So the real advantage of uh, you know for an integrated platform is integrated security, uh, where you you have a security uh, uh, appliance, uh, um, which is basically sitting between your security and access control, managing both the platforms along with your wireless. So that, and there is no compromise on your access layer. Uh, you are managing uh, all the access layer platform itself from a UTM appliance. So. Uh, uh, in, in terms of deployment, you can have a single pane of management uh, switches and access point to a centralized 40 gate uh, firewall, or you can have a centralized 40 manager, which will allow you to deploy and uh, manage uh, all, all the branch locations from a single um, single pane of management for multiple or distributed deployment. And when it comes to the sizing, uh, the, there are different models available starting with, I mean, depending the capacity of number of access point is supported by the model of 40 gate appliance. So when you do the sizing or when you're working with customer, please make sure that you always refer to our data sheet numbers uh, in, uh, to know the exact number of AP, uh, AP supported by the respective 40 gate model. So, uh, in terms of uh, you know interface creation, if you see the SSID, uh, it, it's exactly similar to a interface that we create. A, a, any any a interface that you create on 40 gate appliance. So uh, uh, the configuration and look and feel you can see it's same. And additionally, on top of that, you uh, if you see the details of uh, a SSID, so you have. A SSID, which is mapped to the service policies, similar to your interface, where what is allowed, you're allowing internet to that user or blocking along with, you're enabling all the UTM features on the same SSID. So it's it's a similar interface. It is similar interface configuration uh, or similar, or you can have a uniform policies when you are creating uh, or when you're integrating, uh, uh, you know, uh, a integrated platform where you can have a common global policies for wired and uh, UTM policies across wired and wireless platforms. And the integrated solution from Fortinet manages AP and switches from the same graphical user, user interface. And SSID or a switch VLAN, uh, it, it's just, you know, uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a fabric that takes care uh, of manage uh, in, you know management or configuration of this uh, SSID and VLAN interface. So from a visibility point of view, you are, you are going to gain a complete uh, uh, visibility what is connected behind. So uh, on my screen, what you see the number of endpoint devices connected behind the access point or the switches connected to the 40 gate appliance. Additionally, you can also have a for uh, in case of distributed uh, deployments or uh, SD branch deployments, you, you can offer your customer with a 4D manager, which allows you to do a centralized management or a template based configuration for all your uh, uh, no wireless deployment, or you can do a centralized uh, uh, SSID, uh, sorry, your SSID configuration, or you can have a centralized um, uh, ESSID configured and pushed across the branch locations, or you can even do a uh, upgrade configuration change centrally from 40 Manager itself. Additionally, we also introduce uh, IoT Guard device profiling or identification. So something, anything, uh, any IoT device that is connected behind your wired or wireless platform. So 40, uh, 40. 
uh, 40 gate uh, as long as you have iot subscription so with the, with the help of iot subscription 40 guard is going to query this uh, information uh, in 40 guards uh, database where we are going to discover the type of device and profile that device accordingly So let's move on to the dedicated uh, RF controller, uh, which is uh, on-premise wireless LAN controller platform. So uh, uh, the, the key, uh, you know, sometimes you come across with, uh, with a requirement where customers does not want to integrate your um, security in uh, wireless into the security, where uh, you, you don't want to uh, you basically, they want to have uh, two silo platforms or acting independently or working independently. Uh, or sometimes it's a challenge because you have a separate team uh, of security and you have a, a dedicated team for infrastructure where they don't, they, uh, where customer choice is not to merge together. So in such cases, you can still offer a dedicated out of platform where IT does not need to have uh, access to the security firewalls. And then uh, this also have uh, you know uh, enhanced capabilities of virtual cell. We will discuss that in further slides. So <clears throat> form factor, you can have a choice of deployment. Uh, you can offer your customers with an appliance, hardware appliance, and a VM platform. Uh, when it comes to licensing, uh, this is a key differentiator. Uh, comparing to our competition, we we don't need any licensing on the controller. The capacity or the support of number of access point uh, depends on the controller model and the ap model which is supported by controller is universal so this is very important keep this in mind that only universal series access points can be managed uh, through a centralized or on-premise controller uh, there is no way if you introduce fap or uh, faps model of access point and try to uh, in integrate or try to manage them through a cent uh, centralized controller that is not possible so the only uh, 40 ap model that works with controller is universal access point so it's a typical uh, example for a campus wide deployment where you have uh, I, I mean you could also have uh, a centralized deployment managing multiple access points e even in case of distributed architect you can still offer as long as uh, your APs can reach to the centralized controller and they can register uh, and, and you can do the local bridging for uh, user traffic. So uh, the only management traffic can be forwarded to a centralized WLAN controller. So a typical example of uh, deployment, how it looks like. So in, in this case, you can see you have uh, uh, a similar case where uh, APs are source power from a POE switch the user traffic the endpoint or, or clients they are connected behind the uh, wireless access point the traffic is being forwarded to your uh, uh, your access points through a secure tunnel the traffic is being forwarded to the wireless line controller from wireless line controller it is forwarded to the uh, you know next destination or to the internet via your next generation firewall in this case keep uh, keep in mind there is no dependency of 40 switches uh, whether you're using 40 aps or universal access point so there is no dependency this works in with any third party vendor maybe if the customer has the existing cisco switches we can have our aps working with cisco switches so there is no dependency on that yeah, same case uh, if you are setting a wireless LAN controller there is no dependency of having 40 gate firewall at customer side if the customer may have any any firewall it could be from a competition palo alto or surface firewall uh, the customer already has so th there is no need of uh, 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 replacing that or uh, or a direct dependency on that okay additionally you have a wireless line manager which does a centralized management in terms of uh, you know distributed uh, deployment or for customers who needs advanced uh, administrative tools uh, for uh, uh, proactive and reactive uh, reactive troubleshooting purpose. So uh, this option is based on Fortinet wireless line controller uh, controller managed. So uh, a, a traditional wireless line controller to manage access points and wireless connections. Uh, this deployment is ideal for large deployments, high density wireless environments where there are many users who are uh, who's looking for roaming applications or who's looking for mobility uh, where they require a, high, a highly mobile uh, uh, 
uh, environment with a high bandwidth requirements where they are running applications like low latency applications uh, such as uh, they want to have voice and video uh, running over wireless platform within this deployment type you have the options to choose uh, you know uh, when it comes to deployment you can have a channel plan that is filtered through 14-inch uh, the, I mean the uh, channel plan uh, that actually basically fits best uh, with the controller platform while other vendors have limited uh, uh, multi-channel architect so we, we will refer to that in the next slide uh, the, uh, uh, the solution deployment options that you have on a centralized controller platform so you also have ability to choose uh, which security options uh, you know I mean we support all the uh, enterprise grade security features uh, on a controller platform so we, we will see that during our demo so as i mentioned it's a traditional wireless land controller a typical deployment where you have a centralized wireless land controller i mean in in a distributed architect where you have multiple sites but you are managing uh, uh, all the controllers from a uh, wireless LAN manager. So it's a single pane of management, managing your wireless uh, access points and wireless controller from a centralized location and uh, uh, through 40 manager. And this has uh, some unique features or patent technology where uh, you can have APs deployed in a virtual cell or single channel. Uh, and not only that, uh, you know, we also have uh, a similar deployment uh, options where you can cho um, uh, choose to deploy uh, or go with multi-channel or microcell deployment and along with that we also have built-in spectrum analysis uh, and a unique feature or capability with service assurance um, uh, uh, features along with uh, WIPs and WITs. All these features are fully loaded uh, on, on the controller like uh, features like advanced features like policy enforcement, spectrum analysis, rogue AP detection. So such features, they, they even these advanced features on a controller, they don't require any additional license on the controller. As I mentioned uh, earlier, the capacity that uh, the number of AP support depends on the capacity or the model of controller that you're proposing to your customer or that you're offering. So it's a key differentiator when you compare 14 and wireless BOM, a controller BOM with a competition. So here we can see the key difference here with our competition. Uh, uh, Fortinet access points are uh, uh, basically for us what we need a uh, hardware appliance, the access point, controller and support. Whereas our competitors, they need a access point controller along with AP license. If they want any additional features like, uh, 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 you know, if they want to use spectrum features on a controller or if they want to use policy enforcement on a controller. So that requires additional license on a controller. So whereas, uh, you know, uh, the AP license and, and advanced feature license is not required for 49, 49 wireless line controller. This will really greatly help your customer to, you know, re reduce the OPEX operational cost when they go for a renewal next year. And uh, looking at the deployment modes, Fortinet offers multi-channel or a legacy mode of deployment where you can ha choose multiple uh, the APs with a dif a mul different uh, channels deployed in a different channel across uh, different channels. Where uh, you know it's a, it's approach uh, traditional approach of any micro cell or multi-channel vendor. Then we also have something called virtual cell single channel architect, which is unique or patent tech technology to Fortinet, where you can have all the APs deployed on a same channel or single channel. Additionally, we have a virtual cell and uh, uh, channel layering approach where customer can have a dedicated layer of channel and you can map this uh, dedicated layer of channel towards an application. For example, I can have, or you can offer your customer to uh, have 36 as a channel uh, at 5 gigahertz to run only voice applications whereas 44 you can dedicate it for internal uh, you know uh, internal uh, 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 internal ssid or your corporate ssid purpose and same time you can have the other channel dedicated channel for your guest on guest devices so in in this case in this segment uh, you know the the idea behind this uh, you you can ensure that if you're in case you're running your customer is running some uh, really um, low latency or some uh, critical applications uh, especially if you are selling our solution in a healthcare environment where uh, you know uh, they, they have life critical applications running right so you can choose mode of deployment where you can dedicate a rf layer with uh, uh, to a specific uh, application or a service that customer is running so uh, uh, in this way we are not only second 
segregating or doing a segmentation on a network layer, but also you're uh, doing a segmentation uh, of user traffic at a RF layer. So quick look at the controller models. So we have uh, different controller models starting with 50D, 200, 500, 1000, and 3000. So what you refer to 50, 200, so basically that's the capacity of a number of AP supported by a controller model starting with 50 AP, 200 uh, for a mid size. And uh, for a, uh, you know, um, for a large uh, model, we have uh, three different controllers starting with uh, FWLC 500D supports up to 500 access point and 7500 concurrent devices and if you go if you look at the 3000d supports up to 3000 access point uh, and starting with uh, 500d uh, you can have a dl power supply uh, on the controller additionally all these platforms uh, all these controllers are available on a vm platform so it is a choice of deployment or if customer want to have appliance or you know uh, or wants to deploy on a vm platform you can decide on and on a management platform, we have two different models. Basically, uh, this is limited to the capacity that we offer. So uh, FWM 100D that supports up to 1,000 access points with 5,000 client devices. Whereas uh, if you have 1,000D FWM uh, Fortinet Wireless LAN Manager, so you can support up to 15,000 access points and 75,000 clients. And it has a storage of 20, uh, sorry, two terabyte storage. And uh, additionally, uh, you can deploy them on a uh, VM platform, irrespective if you're running Hyper-V, uh, VMware, EXI, or on a Linux KVM platform. So uh, 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 now we, we have seen the 40 manager offering. Now, in terms of 40 uh, uh, wireless LAN management or solution offering, it gives you a complete uh, inventory of number of controllers managed by a centralized location, a number of controllers running in your uh, customer uh, environment. Uh, from a single point of management and the number of access points you could uh, do the grouping of access point based on the location based on the floor it could be uh, uh, you know uh, static or dynamic uh, grouping that you want to assign and you can do a centralized uh, uh, software management or you can do upgrade or downgrade of your application similarly you can do a complete uh, detailed monitoring you can have complete network monitoring ap monitoring the health of your access point the health of your wi-fi uh, from a centralized management point of view and we can have a template based configuration where you can uh, uh, do a centralized template based configuration and you can push the configuration back to the second program and it also has a detailed uh, you know proactive and reactive troubleshooting tools where you can go back always uh, retain the customer's uh, user session uh, and look into the logs what exactly went wrong if uh, uh, you know if you, uh, you know, to retain uh, the session information uh, along with if uh, a detailed troubleshooting tools available on uh, 40 uh, wireless LAN manager where you can have uh, a rogue AP detection, you have uh, WIPs mo uh, built in on 40 wireless LAN manager. We have service assurance mo uh, module uh, on 40 wireless LAN manager. So uh, uh, basically a lot of troubleshooting at, at advanced administrative along with detailed reports. For example, the customer wants to have um, station reports, AP reports, network inventory reports, uh, uh, Wi-Fi health reports. So different type of reports that customer wants to generate then uh, you can have uh, a, a detailed report generated through 40 wireless LAN manager. Also keep in mind that uh, on wireless LAN controller, the, the logs are limited. So if you want to go back and retain any historical information, you can't do that. You need to have a wireless LAN manager to get the historical reports or historical uh, uh, information on your network. Additionally, we also have uh, uh, an app available for iOS. Very soon we will introduce for um, uh, Android platform as well. So you could actually uh, monitor your wireless LAN manager on your fingertips uh, by installing 40 wireless LAN manager app on your mobile device. Uh, additionally, uh, you know, from uh, the upgrade of uh, 8.5, uh, we also introduced 40 net wireless LAN manager uh, to manage your 40 gate AP. So the idea behind this, uh, you know, we have a one common uh, centralized wireless LAN management platform where you can manage uh, integrated as well as controller based uh, access points from a single console or single uh, management platform. And now well, even the wireless LAN manager, you know, wireless LAN management platform can integrate with the, if, if your customer has the existing 40 manager, we can integrate wireless manager with the 40 manager. And in terms of uh, access point, uh, 
uh, or access point uh, uh, that we carry in our product portfolio. So we have different combinations. Like uh, you can see, starting with two by two, uh, uh, three by three, four by four, eight to two dot eleven AC wave one. Wave one is uh, I don't really see that we are selling wave one uh, anymore. So mainly we are focusing now on wave two and AX access point. So we have different combinations, uh, you know, uh, with um, to meet the customer requirement where they they are looking for a high density access point or a medium density or a low density access this point depending on what customer needs uh, along with internal antenna external antenna and also we have outdoor uh, ip67 rated access points that can be deployed in a harsh weather conditions uh, uh, you know and they are ip67 certified additionally we got some uh, you know special purpose access points like uh, designed for hospitality purpose uh, uh, for instance you can see fap u24 je that's designed for a hospitality customer that has additional ethernet ports so uh, in case of hospitality customer they can, uh, you know, uh, place uh, the AP in, in every guest room, and along with that, they can also have additional uh, ports that can be connected to a wired laptop in a, in a hospitality or a guest room. Or you can use one of the port to source power for your IP phone. So there could be a different use case, or you can run other um, services or connect other wired uh, uh, applications on on the switch uh, on the access point port. Okay, so uh, we, uh, you know, just to uh, before we move on to that, ex uh, look into that example. So, Fortinet wireless LAN controller. So, when you refer to our controller, we have enterprise grade features, but the, uh, you know, same time we don't compromise on security. So now, Fortinet wireless con LAN controller is integrated with Fortinet security fabric. So, let's look at the quick example here. So in, in this, uh, you know, one of the client device is trying to access a malicious website connecting behind a wireless SSID or behind a controller. So when a user is trying to access a malicious website, the traffic is detected by the FortiGate and the traffic is blocked by the FortiGate. Now, when FortiGate blocks the traffic, FortiGate is generating uh, the security logs and the, these logs are being forwarded to the Forti Analyzer. With the Forti Analyzer, with a license of IOC, Forti Analyzer does the computing of those logs. And if, uh, you know, Forti Analyzer, let's say, that detects that, uh, you know, uh, with the indication of uh, trust, detects uh, uh, that the device or the client is, Compromise. So what forty um, get uh, for, what forty get does that forty get sends a REST API a request to the wireless LAN manager to ban this client or uh, you know the uh, to uh, to ban this station or stop this client connecting to the network. So this is like a seamless uh, automated quarantine flow where. Uh, you know something similar to uh, a knock a knack functionality without any man uh, intervention looking at your logs uh, we fortinet is taking an action uh, or sending a rest api uh, call to the wireless LAN manager to disconnect the client from the network so <clears throat> it's a typical uh, integration example you have multiple options you can have uh, when you detect a compromised host we can have uh, you know different uh, options configured. Maybe if you just want to notify administrator, quarantine that device, quarantine uh, block the device, or uh, you know you want move, to move that client to the uh, uh, quarantine VLAN. So th there could be um, uh, different actions that you can define or different workflow that you can define here. Okay, so quickly uh, let's look at the cloud uh, AP management. So. So form factor is, uh, uh, you know, uh, hosted on a cloud. So your, your control uh, resides on 40 cloud. Uh, there is no licensing required. You can manage any model or any series or any family of access point, whether you, you have your customer has FAP, 40 AP, or you have 40 universal access point or uh, 40 smart AP. So irrespective of any model, they are compatible and they can be managed from a, uh, uh, from a 40 uh, cloud. Additionally, if, if the customer doesn't have 40 um, uh, care contract, then, uh, the, uh, then the only challenge is he's not able to retain the advanced logs. Okay, so there is an advanced uh, license available. If you want to get historical logs, uh, you know, uh, or a, or a long term logs from 40 um, cloud management. So this this is another example where you have multiple remote sites. You can have uh, a centralized management through uh, 40 cloud. Uh, um, uh, and, and customer can manage and can have 
uh, seamless uh, configuration or uh, similar SSID broadcasting in all the location uh, with the, with the same authentication mechanism. So we we can pretty much do that. Uh, you know what what you could do from a centralized controller. Additionally, if you uh, you know if if you Uh, Raf Rafik, again, uh, your voice is breaking. Uh, you know, or, or industry's most secure access point, then you can offer them a smart access point where uh, you, you could actually enable all the UTM features uh, on, on AP level and they are protected uh, uh, against the 40 guard uh, database. Or, or they gain subscription from... Uh, uh, or they gain updates from the 40 guard database additionally we also have a 3g for, uh, 4g uh, you know uh, 40 extenders these extenders can be seamlessly integrated with your 40 gate firewall you can have similar to a van interface you can have the similar configuration this was one of the key uh, differentiator when we are talk talking about in a uh, harsh weather conditions <clears throat> so uh, moving on to, to uh, uh, a quick uh, high How frequently that user visits a mall what what are the areas or what which part that user takes right and then you can generate Hello, Rafik. Yeah. Uh, present solution you can understand the journey of your um, uh, from, uh, of your customers basically uh, their journey through the location tells you Uh, journey and at the same time you can have uh, a you know presence analytics to get the you know uh, the trends about number of visitors number of footfall uh, visitors by type of devices by age group if they are inter integrated onboarding through social media platform and total number of users total uh, total user count same time you can do a comparison also if, if the customer has multiple sites or with 40 running with 40 present so 40 present you can have this uh, on a cloud platform so currently uh, 40 present cloud uh, platform with a light version supporting up to five sites is totally free of cost so you can integrate 40 presence 
with all the three platforms you can have the, uh, your controller integrated with 40, 40 presence you can have your um, integrated or cloud platform integrated uh, with for, uh, uh, with uh, 40 presence uh, cloud solution so this can give you presence analytics like uh, you know uh, in a uh, take an example this could be a, a mall area so you can know with the heat maps uh, you know uh, the high density area basically you, you can see that where are the areas of uh, user density uh, you're seeing at any given time so uh, you know uh, 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 maybe it's a food court area where you're seeing during the lunch hours you're seeing a huge uh, footfall in that area or you want to track a user or generate a report about uh, a user pattern so you know uh, the part that user is taking or if you want to find a specific device on a map or a user at any given time you can do a search and you can manually track that user and definitely uh, you know all the area of interest are not same there might be uh, your customer has different areas it could be uh, you know uh, uh, specific area depending on um, you know a, a retail outflow it, it could be uh, uh, you know uh, uh, yeah, it could be a supermarket or it could be in, in a mall it could be a, a play area it could be a food court so uh, it, it gives you a complete uh, presence analytics uh, defining with respect to the uh, with respect to the area that you define on 40 presence so portal this is a uh, customized capty portal you can see uh, you know it's a fully customizable again you can change the background image you can have uh, integration with uh, uh, google and uh, google plus and facebook for social media authentication platform purpose. So let's quickly move on to the 40 switches. <clears throat> so one of the key challenge at access layer, the number of devices, uh, you know, uh, as we discussed in the beginning, there, there are a lot of, um, uh, uh, we are seeing more and more devices connecting to the access layer. Uh, this could be, uh, you know, the era of uh, IoT where uh, you have uh, devices connecting behind your access layer. On top of that, these are tiny devices. They are uh, very efficient uh, uh, and uh, they are built for a space, uh, for a special purpose, but they have no, uh, you know, uh, brain on it uh, or no mechanism where you can't uh, run an endpoint protection on those devices so we need we need a way or, or a v, a, we need a way of protection to secure them uh, secure different type of devices on access layer and same time when you have uh, multiple platforms or multiple kind of products uh, take an example you know uh, you have a firewall from fortinet or a controller from cisco and it's uh, on a switching platform from uh, uh, HP. So it's a point of products where you are trying to integrate them or, uh, you know, uh, the design uh, or the solution design is done uh, uh, in the first place, but then we are trying to apply security on top of that. So there always when we take this approach, there are loopholes, uh, you know, uh, that we uh, usually avoid or overcome. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. Moving on to the Fortinet security fabric. The Fortinet security fabric uh, uh, provides full protection across your digital uh, attack surface or digital infrastructure, uh, including, you know, starting from multi-point of products, including your internal next generation firewall or a, um, your core a core firewall or internal segmentation firewall. Uh, it could be anything, but along with uh, uh, the fabric management center that provides a single pane of uh, glass uh, for simplifying your operations, enabling automation and workflow. Uh, then you, any point of time, you have complete visibility and control of all traffic and threats at any point uh, across the attack surface from edge to the core uh, side. <clears throat> So if you, if you see the traditional network architecture and network design that builds out of, uh, you know, uh, the network as the first uh, place, and then we try to put uh, the layer of security on top of that. So Fortinet uh, has a security driven uh, networking approach where that enables convergence of security and access layer together. So uh, the, uh, the network access layer is designed within the integrated security uh, framework. So it's a kind of uh, framework where, uh, you know, your security and uh, access layer is integrated uh, through 40 OS uh, and uh, 40 OS uh, 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 on the 40 gate and we, we are managing using a proprietary tunneling protocol okay uh, and 
and when you add a network management uh, into the you know uh, uh, basically to to the 40 gate firewall so you you get this uh, you know with the um, uh, you can have the same set of uh, uh, same level of protection or security so it's basically it, it's a logical extension of your access layer when you integrate uh, uh, your network with 40 gate So as you can see, secure access solution includes different combinations of Fortinet products uh, that relate to wired and wireless and access layer security. But in any combination, uh, the goal is very clear for us that okay, security is uh, always put in the first priority. And uh, at the endpoint device, uh, you know, and to ensure that the endpoint devices are not compromised and that compromise will not, uh, or even if they are compromised or connected to the network and they are not, uh, you know, propagate uh, to the core or uh, uh, or uh, it prevents you from east west infection uh, and if you look at the uh, traditional solution topology that might looks like uh, you know 40 ap's 40 gate uh, uh, and 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 40 switches but leveraging that integration through uh, you know single pane of management you are managing everything uh, 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 through a uh, uh, through a 40 link uh, uh, where, where you're you're managing your access points and switches and additionally for a distributed or sd branch deployments we can have uh, uh, a centralized management for uh, you know for for your uh, and complete knock uh, knock and sock uh, uh, operations uh, centrally along with uh, uh, centralized management for your wide and wireless platform Yeah, so <clears throat> Fortinet Secure Access uh, uh, Ethernet, uh, basically uh, the pr proprietary protocol that we run between the 40 gate and 40 uh, switches uh, to discover, manage uh, uh, switches uh, is, uh, is called as 40 link. So 40, 40 link is the protocol that we run uh, between 40 APs and uh, 40, 40 switches. So we, we are going to see that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, 40 link as a protocol and managing um, 40 switches and 40 APs through the 40, centralized 40 gate firewall with an integrated example. <clears throat> and additionally, uh, uh, it, it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, when you have a, a deployment or you're competing or working against uh, competition, it does not mean that you need to only uh, uh, take approach of, uh, you know, uh, integrated platform or, or, for, or 40 link deployment. There are many use cases or instances where let's say a customer doesn't have a 40 gate firewall or he's not a 40 gate customer but looking for a, uh, a revamp of uh, 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 switching infrastructure so in this case you can still propose you can have uh, a 40 ap uh, 40 switches deployed uh, uh, in a standalone mode uh, uh, unlike any uh, uh, switching infrastructure uh, uh, in case of uh, you know if you want to have layer 3 functionality on a switch then uh, you need to introduce a layer three license uh, or a layer three license is required on a switch. Whereas in case of 40 link managed by the 40 gate or 40 switches managed by the 40 gate, the layer three interface is configured on a 40 gate firewall. So the routing is taken care or routing is certainly done by, by the 40 gate firewall. In this case, we don't require a license. Additionally, in a case in case of distributed architect where your customer has multiple remote locations, but they are looking for a platform, uh, you know, a common platform to manage them uh, centrally. So one choice is you you can always go uh, uh, back and manage them through 40 manager by having 40 gate uh, integration. If not, then you could also manage uh, 40 switches through the 40 cloud platform. So we we can manage. Uh, 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 up to four switches at free of cost uh, or there, without any license on 40 cloud uh, uh, a, a 40 cloud switch management so <clears throat> let's look at the uh, you know the switching solution offering so we we got different four types of uh, uh, or, or four series of switches uh, small to mid and then uh, we have uh, uh, or, or you could consider the small to uh, campus wide uh, switching platform 
So here uh, you could see the 100 series, uh, 200 series, 400 and 500 series respect uh, respectively. So uh, the key difference uh, here uh, on this switching platform or, or the model of series or you can make out the difference is the uh, capacity of, of the number of uplinks, right? So in 100 series, we have uh, uplink capacity of one gig ports, two to four, and then uh, typically you have uh, four ports, uh, SFE ports uplink capacity on um, 200 series, which are mid, uh, mid level 40 switches. Whereas if you look at enterprise switching models, they are, uh, 400 and 500 uh, models respectively with uh, uh, uplink um, uh, support of uh, 10 gig on 400 series, whereas uh, 500 has uh, 40 gig uplinks as well, 240 gig uplinks. And looking at uh, the data center firewalls or uh, top of the rack uh, firewalls, we have uh, two different types of uh, uh, high-end switching models, which is 1000 series and 3000 series. 1000 series has two models, 1000 10240 which uh, has 24 uh, ports uh, 10 gig and uh, 24 uh, 10 gig ports uh, and has also <clears throat> has two uh, 40 gig uplinks and uh, uh, if if you look at uh, 1000 series the 10041048 uh, uh, e which is uh, a 48 port 10 gig uh, switch with uh, uplink uh, you know uh, 100 gig uh, uplink, uh, 400 gig uplink. So if, if we see here with 1000 series, uh, in 1000 series, we have uh, 30 to 100 gig uh, 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 Ethernet ports uh, and uh, slots. And uh, with uh, starting with uh, 1000 series, we have a hot swa swappable power supply support. Uh, and in case of uh, OT environments or industrial environments, we, we do have a 1124 PoE switch and uh, one to four uh, D uh, switches. So basically it's a uh, 12 port uh, uh, switch, uh, eight ethernet ports and four SFP ports, whereas, uh, uh, and it's a PoE plus switch. Whereas one, uh, one to four D is a 16 port uh, ethernet and four ports uh, additionally SFP ports. So basically in terms of uh, capacity, in terms of uh, meeting a customer requirement, we have uh, uh, you know uh, all the requirements starting with entry model uh, where uh, you know basically the sizing depends on the uh, the traffic at a customer side. So for the small deployments starting with 100 series moving on to 200, 400 and 500 respectively uh, with all the combinations non-POE, POE and full POE uh, power budget. Uh, additionally, we also have multi-gig switches uh, uh, to support uh, AX or <clears throat> multi-gig uh, uh, so, uh, multi gig uh, interface switches uh, so access points that can be source power through multi multi gig switches <clears throat> so uh, as a conclusion uh, 40 switches are uh, you know they 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 have support for number of uh, device support in terms of bandwidth requirement to meet the customer bandwidth requirement or the port density along with the you know the uh, integration with security fabric uh, through the 40 link and a single pane of management whether you do the management through over a 40 gate firewall or the management through a centralized 40 manager in a multi-site environment <coughs> All right, so uh, let's take a quick uh, overview of 40 wise uh, solution. <clears throat> 40 wise solution uh, comes from the acquisition of uh, uh, TalkSwitch, uh, which is a well known vendor in uh, Canada and North America market. Uh, we did acquisition in 2011, which is almost uh, uh, 10 years now. So uh, we, we, there has been a lot of enhancement done on the product uh, after the acquisition. Uh, uh, we have introduced new hardware platform. We have introduced uh, uh, a, a, um, uh, a interactive uh, web uh, GUI interface management. Uh, right, there is no need of uh, application to do the uh, IPPB con configuration through uh, through an application. There is no dependency for that. Uh, and and we have introduced some uh, new gateways, new phone models uh, along with that during our journey. So uh, model uh, starting with the model we have uh, you know the low end model that supports our SMB uh, 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 targeted vertical model which is a desktop model that supports up to 20 extension between the capacity of 20 to 50 depending on the model that you select so uh, FVE 20 and FVE 50 
moving on to 100 100 is basically the model where uh, you know your enterprise features are uh, we treat that as an enterprise uh, great ipbbx so it's a it's a one u form factor we have different models under uh, mid mid uh, size so we have uh, fe 100e uh, and then we have uh, 300 and 500 respectively so uh, it's it's the same approach when you look at the uh, model if it is 100e it supports up to 100 uh, sip extensions uh, and uh, different capacity of uh, sip trunks okay and uh, uh, if if you go for a large enterprise deployment so we we support on a vm platform we can scale up to 50000 uh, uh, sip extensions uh, on a on a 40 ipvx platform so it's a choice of customer starting with 100 uh, F- FEE or an enterprise model, we offer a 40 voice platform on a VM platform as well. So it's, it's a choice whether the customer wants to have them on a hardware appliance or a VM platform. So, uh, you know, one keynote here just to uh, uh, remember the number of extension capabilities. Uh, uh, as I referred to you earlier, FEE 100E supports up to 100 SIP extensions uh, with 16 SIP trunks. 200E, uh, 200 supports up to 200. SIP uh, extensions and uh, uh, 24 SIP runs moving on 500. So it, it, again, the size uh, requirement might vary depending on customer requirement. Maybe the number of uh, extensions are, uh, uh, the number of required extensions are relatively low for a customer requirement, but uh, whereas customer is looking for more number of SIP trunk support on a PBX. So maybe, uh, you know, in that case, we have to do the right sizing. So. Uh, <clears throat> We need to understand exactly what customer is looking from a sizing point of view. Additionally, you can have uh, our PBX deployed on a cloud, uh, you know, uh, since it is available on a VM platform. Uh, and we do offer uh, uh, PBX on a cloud as uh, or 40 voice as a service, but uh, uh, but that service is available only for uh, North America and Canada market only, or limited to North America and Canada today. Uh, uh, moving on to the gateways, we have different types of gateways. We we do have traditional. Uh, if you got traditional lines uh, connecting, so uh, before I move on to the gateway, you can look at the models entry model. If if you see FEE two E uh, and FEE four E, the uh, the main difference here uh, uh, with two and four, that's basically the number of uh, FXO lines or the number of uh, uh, traditional uh, telephone lines that you can connect on the PBX. Uh, and if if we see FEE six and eight, that, so that's basically the capacity of number of FXO or lines that you can directly terminate on our IPBS. Additionally, if you go, if you look at uh, the previous models, the high, uh, enterprise grade models, uh, like 100, 500, and uh, 3,000 different models, they they don't have a built-in uh, you know, or or we don't take an approach of uh, 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 other vendors uh, in the market where you have to physically. Uh, install a line card uh, uh, as a interface to the existing PBA. So what what we you could do is you can have a voice gateway uh, uh, depending on the number of uh, lines or number of trunking that customer or trunks that customer is looking for. So basically uh, we we have uh, FXO the traditional gateway uh, which is um, uh, FG008 supports up to eight uh, traditional FXO lines and in case if you are using FXS or if you have a customer who has a uh, existing analog at uh, traditional telephone line deployment and they still want to continue uh, or they are in a process of migration where they want to use or retain certain analog lines in that case you can terminate these uh, analog lines through uh, FXS uh, gateway uh, and we also have two models on a PRI uh, or ISDN gateway that supports uh, uh, that can take input for, for one and two respectively. So if, if customer is looking for a redundancy or customer is looking for uh, more than one PRI gateway, then you can offer the two uh, uh, FG02 that has uh, that has support for up to two PRI gateways. <clears throat> so if you if you look at the administrative management console, uh, it's it's a very interactive. You could do all the configuration and uh, management of IPPBX from uh, uh, the web uh, GUI interface itself. So we will see that uh, this during the uh, uh, during the demo. And in terms of uh, voice uh, uh, support or, or uh, you know uh, a, a voice mailbox uh, for your customer, the customer can log into the. Uh, uh, can log into his voice mailbox uh, uh, by logging in 
using his extension detail and he can pull out information about the, the number of uh, voicemails that he has received or uh, the facts that he has received or if you want to go back and retain the call information or call records or, uh, or if a recording is enabled then he can retain the recording by logging in to his uh, um, uh, uh, his folder uh, on 40 uh, voice uh, IPBBX and also this can do a integration with your LDAP uh, or we allow LDAP integration here. Uh, and on the same platform, uh, you you could actually enable uh, call center uh, features. Like uh, uh, all you need is on on the same IP PBX enter enterprise grade PBX. We need additional licenses depending on number of agent support that you are looking for. So it's a uh, it, uh, basically on a call center uh, solution. We do have a web based console. <clears throat> One second, guys. Okay, so web based uh, uh, console with uh, other functionalities like dynamic um, uh, uh, call routing, call distribution, uh, call center, uh, dynamic call uh, center agent allocation, or skill based routing based on uh, you know the uh, the agent skills you can actually flow the calls. So uh, it could be you know or or taking the feedbacks from your customer. So uh, multiple options are or in um, features like any. Um, um, any enterprise grade PBX uh, that you're looking for, we do have similar features. Or even uh, 40 IP PBX has, has a built in reporting feature where uh, you can have a, a custom report uh, look, to see the performance of your call center agent, the number of calls he has accepted, the number of calls he has attended, how frequently he has resolved the issue, the time, uh, all, all the details you can generate a detailed report from 40 uh, ip uh, 40 voice pbx itself additionally uh, for even uh, the user extension or dex phone uh, you can all, uh, go back always and generate a, a customized report or detailed report to see uh, the number of call flow or to see the number of uh, received calls or uh, you know answered or unanswered call or, or for reporting purpose you can get a detailed report here uh, additionally, uh, our PBX is uh, uh, you know uh, is ready to integrate or it is compatible or uh, uh, with all the industry leading property management solutions. So in case you're selling 40 wise in a hospitality uh, vertical, then we have our IP PBX integration with hospitality. Keep in mind uh, when you integrate our IP PBX or you want to enable call center features uh, such features requires additional license on a pbx so depending on number of rooms that you want to cover from pbx or number of uh, extensions that you are managing through or integrating uh, through our uh, 40 wise ip pbx uh, we can uh, we need to consider the number of uh, equal number of licenses on uh, 40 wise uh, ip pbx and moving on to the phones we have different model of phones depending mainly the, these are hd quality or audio quality phones depending on uh, you know mainly uh, uh, on a on a price bench or uh, the uh, the models depending on entry model uh, you know phones including your touch screen phone or reception phone with additional function keys or we have uh, some phones which are designed for especially designed for hospitality vertical uh, you know, um, phones so uh, we we have different variety of phones uh, and and uh, including the uh, touch screen or uh, and, uh, or executive phone so multiple combinations different uh, combinations we do have uh, additionally when it comes to the cordless phones we have uh, uh, we, we do have cordless phones that requires a base station and a cordless phone uh, uh, and uh, you can also introduce con or uh, conferencing room solution to your customers uh, and uh, uh, this can also integrate with your wireless or you can uh, yeah you can integrate your ongoing call or your phone call and use your conferencing phone as a uh, you know as a loudspeaker or a microphone uh, by integrating your phone uh, over a bluetooth so this has uh, various functionalities uh, uh, on the conferencing room solution or conferencing room phone and <clears throat> moving on to the uh, soft agent or soft client uh, uh, we do support uh, pretty much all the endpoints uh, starting with ios uh, if you are running android or um, uh, Windows or Linux platform, uh, you, your customers can uh, or users can register or they can dial in or they can register their SIP extension uh, from the uh, uh, you know uh, within the premises or working remotely. So you can have your SIP agent register to uh, your HQ. So uh, you you don't miss corporate calls and 
uh, if the extension is mobile so wherever the user he is able to he is in a position to answer all all the calls on his uh, all the calls that are transferred uh, to his uh, uh, desk phone so these are uh, features that uh, we already referred just to for you to know like uh, support in terms of pms integration we uh, you know uh, uh, top vendors like uh, micro uh, is is one of the integration vendor that we support or if you have mitel pms uh, uh, solution that can also be integrated and features like uh, uh, you know dnd uh, and guest name display on our phones with uh, hospitality integration or wake up call or uh, out of service status or, or you know different use cases uh, uh, are, are there basically when you integrate property man uh, the hospitality management uh, with our ipvx solution so this is one of the example with a PMS phone. Uh, uh, and then you have administrative portal. There are phones inside the room. So this is going to give you, uh, you know, the uh, room status, minibar status, information, wake up, uh, and so on from uh, PM integration point of view. So uh, let's move on to quickly uh, Forte Recorder. So <clears throat> 40 voice as a solution, we have multiple components uh, as a part of our solution. So looking at uh, 40 camera solution, 40 recorder is a heart of our solution, which does recording or which receives recording from all the cameras and stores locally on a on a 40 recorder. So currently we have two different models uh, uh, in terms of recorder, one the low end which supports up to 16 channel or 16 cameras and the other one supports up to 32 so uh, uh, moving on to uh, we also have a vmware platform where you can manage uh, all the cameras through a 40 a vm 40 recorder uh, <clears throat> so uh, let's look at the uh, different model of cameras that we have so you you can see we we got different type of uh, cameras bullet cameras dome cameras ptz cameras all the cam combinations of cameras are available uh, within uh, our product line when it comes to phys physical security solution offering uh, and <clears throat> integration with third party cameras we do support integration with third party cameras as long as the camera is onvf uh, i compliant so uh, <clears throat> Additionally, when you integrate these uh, to integrate these cameras with 40 recorder, that requires a, a license uh, on on 40 recorder to manage these cameras to to uh, uh, to be managed uh, uh, by 40 recorder. 40 recorder. Apart from 40 recorder, we also have a 40 central uh, video management solution. This solution allows you uh, to uh, have. Uh, centralized repository of uh, multiple locations so for example uh, if you want to have uh, a, a quick uh, uh, view of uh, some critical areas on one on one of the screens so you can define that you can have a real time uh, timeline you can go back and retain the logs you can export them it's it's basically a, a centralized uh, management platform where you have distributed uh, 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 you know, our uh, deployment uh, with a recorder and cameras in every branch location. So you could actually centrally map them or centrally you know, manage them from a centralized management video recorder management platform. Uh, and you can also generate a record a recording on that. So uh, it, it additionally, uh, this gives you uh, uh, additional analytics like people counting, it helps you to do the people kind of counting, heat maps of uh, density. Uh, apart from that, uh, it can give you facial recognition and object recognition uh, along with incident alarms uh, if you're integrating with uh, a building management solution or any third party solutions. So let's look at the quickly uh, on the camera models of what we have. So we, we carry this FD40 uh, uh, camera that can be, it's a dome camera, fixed dome camera that can be installed in a indoor or outdoor uh, deployments. It, it, the second model is mini box uh, indoor camera, uh, which is four megapixels. So, uh, sorry, four megapixel that has a built-in uh, microphone. Then uh, we, we do have an outdoor, uh, or speed uh, uh, dome camera for outdoor deployment purpose. This can give you, uh, uh, it's a pan tilt uh, zoom, supports pan tilt zooms and uh, can sc uh, scale or support 30x zoom uh, on the camera. So moving on to uh, 
the new cameras that we recently introduced. Uh, so this is a new addition to 40 cameras, uh, 40 fam, uh, new addition to 40 fam cameras family. So FD 50B, <coughs> which is a five megapixel camera with uh, uh, with the infrared capture from a distance of 65 feet, uh, that can operate up to <coughs> from minus 20 to 480 to uh, 140 uh, Fahrenheit temperature. So approximately, it's uh, we're talking about 70 degree temperature, and we do have bullet cameras uh, for outdoor deployment purpose and uh, we have uh, PTZ uh, uh, pan tilt zoom uh, dome cameras for indoor and outdoor purpose uh, with the uh, support of 5 megapixel uh, motorized PTZ uh, uh, which is uh, pretty much easy to deploy or in install along with built-in microphone. So <clears throat> hope uh, the session was informative so let's quickly jump on demo before uh, i move on to the demo uh, i'll just uh, quickly review your questions and then uh, then we can continue with the demo So when it comes to 40 AP cloud management, uh, no, there is no license required unless you want to uh, enable advanced uh, features. For example, uh, 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 the, uh, if, if you just want to manage the access point from 40 cloud, there's no license required, uh, but advanced functionality or features, like if you want to have um, uh, uh, login reporting retention period of over a one year, then yes, you need a licensing or if you want to um, tweak the data rates uh, uh, on AP configuration that we will see during the lab or demo that requires a license or additionally if you want to allow uh, you know multicast services like running a uh, bonjour service in your um, on a cloud managed access point that requires a license but additionally if you are using uh, social media platform uh, authentication or you are using self portal guest portal onboarding your uh, connect uh, managing it uh, you know from a pre shared key or radius or integration uh, and uh, reporting for up to one month of duration retention retention period then there is no license required Absolutely, you could manage uh, 40 AP smart APs on the cloud, 40 C as well as uh, uh, you know as both can be managed on over a 40 uh, cloud platform. So consider that all, all the uh, 40 AP models can be managed over 40 cloud platform. The only uh, difference here, when you are using or deploying APs with a controller, you need to consider that we need universal access point. Apart from that. The APs, can, whether they are smart series or whether they are uh, C series or whether they are um, uh, universal access point, they can be managed on both cloud as well as the integrated platform. Uh, but in case of 40 S series access point, which are smart series, as I mentioned earlier, you need 40 guard subscription on the access point. Absolutely, you could manage uh, both the APs from 40 gate as well. Are we expecting any more questions or we can move on to the demo? 
I think I think we can move. Okay, great. Ravi, are you able to see my screen now? Yes, yes, I can see. 40 gig to you. <clears throat> so from a <clears throat> deployment point of view, one of the question, uh, you know, one, uh, one of the uh, point related to the question <clears throat> It, uh, all all the 40 gate firewalls has a built-in uh, WLAN controller feature. There is no dependency of running 40 gate uh, subscription on the uh, 40 gate firewall. Any firewall you could always go back and you can enable uh, uh, you know uh, wireless LAN controller feature on, on the wireless LAN uh, on the 40 gate firewall itself. So we, to do that, you need to just go to the feature visibility. Like I have issues some with my blog. Okay, so you can see here the wireless LAN controller. So it's enabled now. So uh, once the wireless LAN controller and switch controller is enabled uh, uh, on your 40, 40 from your 40 gate firewall, you can you can see a wireless and switch controller here. So once you have the 40 uh, wireless and switch controller, uh, so basically the deployment is pretty simple uh, uh, and easy. When you have a 40 gate firewall uh, or 40 AP connected behind the firewall or any network, ensure that uh, if you are using uh, the old access point, uh, older version, lower than um, uh, older uh, 40 OS, then probably you need to um, enable cap up protocol uh, be uh, because 40 link requires a cap up uh, protocol in the back end. So now, if, if you go back to my interface configuration here, looking at uh, let me quickly. So fabric connector uh, is basically in CapWap is uh, now integrated with uh, you know within fabric connector. So ensure that if you want to manage a access point or the AP needs to be discovered to this uh, via this interface, you need to uh, enable CapWap or uh, on an older version or if you're running the uh, new 40 OS version so ensure that 40 fabric is enabled so once you do that once you connect the access point you're going to see the number of uh, the AP that needs to be managed by the 40 gate firewall so now currently what you see from this firewall point of view we have one AP which is currently managed by the 40 gate firewall similarly the other AP which is waiting or due for management or due for approval so when you connect the AP it, they will automatically discover there are ways like for example if you want to do uh, pre uh, uh, automated profiling what you could do is you can create a profile well in advance and add the serial number of that access point so whenever the ap is connected over the network the ap is automatically added other option is i can just right click and say authorize once i authorize the ap the ap comes under 40 gate management now once 40 gate management is done you're going to gain complete uh, you know uh, information from a monitoring point of view the status of access point the number of aps for waiting for uh, joining or the number number of APs that are currently being managed by the 40 gate firewall. The health of your radio uh, at 2.4, uh, health of your radio at 5 gigahertz band. So you can do that, uh, you know, comparatively your uh, health along with the client information like number of clients connected to the uh, to the SSID, respect to SSID, the type of client, the host name. For instance, uh, my MacBook is connected here to voice SSID. Uh, on which interface uh, it's connected to which channel you you can see that it's connected to 2.4 i have another client which is an android client which is again connected at 2.4 so you you can do see the band distribution here where, and connected devices 
and there is one client which is connected uh, to there are there is one uh, uh, eleven uh, that there's there are two clown, uh, uh, clients basically they are connected at eleven AC right. So in terms of uh, configuration, uh, uh, as we uh, referred to that earlier, so you could actually create a uh, SSID. It's a similar interface configuration on Podigate Firewall. Just map, uh, define your subnet here, uh, uh, create, uh, allow the DHCP. So when you do the deployment, you have multiple options on a, uh, from a Podigate uh, point of view. So we have tunnel mode deployment, bridge mode deployment, and mesh mode deployment. The key difference here, in case of tunnel mode uh, deployment, all your management uh, traffic uh, and uh, the user traffic and data traffic is forwarded to the centralized Podigate firewall. In case of bridge mode, uh, so only the management traffic uh, is forwarded to the Podigate firewall. The uh, user traffic is, uh, uh, you know, basically bridged over the uh, or the uh, AP does the local bridging forwarded to the uh, respective gateway or the uh, forwards to the gateway directly. And in case of mesh deployment, you could choose the mesh deployment option. So these are uh, typically, you know, uh, if you see the SSID, you can create, it's very simple in, in terms of uh, creation and management uh, and looking at the um, uh, security modes or protocols that we support, uh, you can see that we support all the enterprise grade security protocols uh, on, on the integrated platform. Uh, basically we support on all the three platforms, okay. And uh, uh, additional uh, things like if you want to, uh, uh, you know, do captive portal integration, so you, you could introduce captive portal. There is a built-in captive portal within FortiGate that you could use it, but for self-registration purpose or some advanced captive portal, you could always use it external captive portal. That could be a Forti authenticator uh, acting as external captive portal in your use case. And you can bind them to the uh, groups. For, for instance, there is a user group uh, uh, uh group mapping that you can do it against the captive portal then uh, additionally uh, you can also authenticate users against radius you can quarantine the host one of the example where uh, compromised device is connected or a, a, a client is trying to access a malicious website so we we could actually quarantine that host you can also introduce VNA, vlan polling uh, option here so this was uh, a quick uh, look at how uh, uh, how the SSID can be created or defined within FortiGate. So moving back to the Forti AP management. So one of the uh, you know key, key note here, when you create a uh, you know introduce AP, there is a default profile created. So ensure that uh, uh, the profile uh, uh, you know matches to the country uh, region you leave. So basically by default, if I, if I go back to uh, the AP profile settings, my AP profile settings, you can see that currently it is, uh, you know, placed in the US, which is an incorrect country or region. So uh, uh, sometimes uh, you might face issues if your country is not uh, selected, uh, you know, uh, uh, right country is not selected here. So this is one uh, aspect. And additionally, uh, uh, the channels that you want to allow, this is basically the profile of your access point. So what you want to allow, what you want to uh, do, uh, what, what uh, channels you want to allow on this AP, what uh, channel width you want to define, uh, you could create that uh, as a profile here. Additionally, the access points you can see, uh, you know, in case you don't want to use both the radios at the same time, uh, allow only one radio to be used. Other radio, if you want to use that as a, uh, you know, dedicated uh, sensor or a monitor sensor, we, we could always do that. We, uh, you can convert that uh, radio into the uh, sensor and you can enable which profile here, uh, use default one or create a manual. Okay, this was a quick uh, look, uh, you know, uh, on from a wireless management uh, uh, point of view, an integrated manage, uh, wireless management point of view. So moving on to uh, 40 link management or 40 link switch management, you could see the number of switches currently. <clears throat> I have one switch which is currently managed. Uh, so, in, there is uh, a switch connected behind, uh, you know, uh, behind my core switch or behind the uh, switch which is currently managed by FortiLink. So if you go back to the Forti switch management and or Forti switch ports, you can see that information here. <clears throat> so you you could see that uh, uh, on port 24, there is a switch connected behind. And uh, on port 23, my uplink is connected directly to the 40 gate. And you can see the icon of 40 link. So basically, 40 link is running on this port. So uh, on port 24, basically, they are connected uh, through a ISL link between 
uh, between my uh, uh, 48 port and 24 port switch. So if once I authorize this switch, so let uh, and um, uh, so basically this switch is connected connected uh, you know uh, 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 S224E is connected behind um, the D series switch. So this switch has automatically discovered by uh, 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 by the 40 link. So now if I authorize this switch, this switch will join the topology and we are going to see that uh, you know we, you could do the centralized management and uh, administration of that switch from 40 gate firewall itself. So I'll quickly allow or authorize this switch now to join the topology. So I have two different switches, two, uh, S224D and I have S224E. So let me authorize the switch quickly. Once you authorize the switch, switch will go for a reboot and it will join the topology. So we will wait for our switch to uh, come back and online. Meanwhile, we will see the configuration switch uh, configuration uh, from a 40 gate point of view. So uh, if you would like to create a VLAN, it's pretty simple creating a uh, you know interface on a 40 gate firewall or introducing a VLAN. So it's it's same as uh, you know you can just create a VLAN uh, uh, on the 40 link or uh, 40 switch VLAN. So once you create this VLAN, this VLAN on 40 gate firewall, the same VLAN is available on your switch to uh, to be uh, you know configured or selected. So if I go back to the switch port on switch port. Uh, you can see there are uh, you know the ports that uh, are currently uh, you know sourcing power the number of eight these are different access points they are sourcing power from my uh, from the switch port so uh, if the if you create a vlan the vlan uh, once you create the vlan here on switch 40 switch vlan this vlan is available here to be selected if you want to allow or if you want to dedicate a, one of the ports to the respective vlan so you can choose the VLAN from here and you can assign that VLAN to the uh, switch port. Additionally, this is one way of, uh, you know, looking into the port or if you want to see the face plate uh, uh, view of switch, if you click on the face plate, it is going to show you the switches connected behind the 40 gate. So currently uh, this switch, the uh, 224E is gone for a reboot. It, it will take time to join the topology. Maybe in a couple of minutes, this will be up and running. And uh, uh, if you see from the faceplate uh, of 40 gate, uh, uh, 40 switch uh, uh, ports, so you, you can see number of ports they are sourcing power. Additionally, the VLANs that are available for these, uh, you know, for these switches to be configured, on, right? So you, you can define uh, the VLANs from here. And additionally, if you have any trunk ports assigned or configured on that switch port, you can see them from here or manage them from here. And uh, we also recently, with the uh, uh, with a new release of 6.4, we introduced uh, uh, a NAC feature within 40 uh, uh, 40 net secure access architect, where you can actually introduce or create a NAC policy, and you can profile the device against the MAC address or uh, hardware vendor OUI information or the device family type of device. So this could be a, daily, a various uh, you know type of uh, profiling mechanism, or based on the user information, you can map and. Uh, uh, once you profile that, you can uh, map them to the respective, uh, uh, or you can provision them the respective uh, access uh, on the network segment, right? So this is this is another option uh, or built-in uh, uh, NAC feature of, uh, within the secure access architect. So if, if you compare these kind of features, no vendor has that uh, or offers you sim similar set of features and functionalities managing, uh, you know. Uh, 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 a secure access or a single pane of management managing your wired and wireless infrastructure uh, and without compromising on the security. So this was a quick uh, look at. Uh, okay, now I'll quickly, any questions guys on anything specific that uh, uh, you want to discuss or from a management point of view? Or a single pane of management. And uh, you can see if you go to the fabric uh, view, and if I look into the topology, physical topology. Okay, my 40 gate is updating the topology information. So 
so <clears throat> you could see uh, you know my uh, uh, physical topology so in in physical topology i have 40 switches uh, 40 switches behind the 40k firewall managed by a 40 link and uh, there are some endpoint devices connected uh, you know uh, behind that so you you can see the number of endpoint device information and then similarly i have uh, different access or uh, endpoint client devices connected to an access point so i have currently two clients connected or associated to this ap and uh, on this uh, switch port the number of connected devices also you you could see them right and now moving on to the logical topology uh, i think it's still generating the topology meanwhile i'll just go back quickly and see if that switch is up and uh, you know up and running and join the topology 40 switch topology so go back to the manage 40 switches so now you can see both the switches are online now we are currently we are managing both the switches so if i go back and see the uh, 40 switch vlan management sorry 40 switch port management So uh, I'll minimize this. You can see there are two switches managed by Podigate. So in uh, any port management, any switch management you want to do, you could do that from here. And one important aspect, uh, you know, and one important uh, keynote uh, not to forget. So we are go going to gain the complete visibility what is connected behind the switch port at any point of time. So uh, the, this is where if I go back to this port, I know that, okay, uh, on this port, I have a uh, a client, a AP model, a hardware AP, which is FAP321 is connected. Uh, the MAC address of that access point is uh, this. And additionally, on top of that, on same AP, I have a client association, which is a Apple TV connected behind the, uh, to this access point. Similarly, uh, you know, you, you can see different type of devices. Uh, like for instance, like I have one of the camera connected here. So you can see uh, uh, from a visibility point of view, I know, uh, or 48 is, uh, 48 is able to discover the device type. It knows the exactly model, the hardware type. It is a 40 camera FD20 model. So uh, I am from a visibility point of view, what is connected behind your access layer uh, is, is very important to know, uh, you know. So uh, uh, you, you're gaining complete single, uh, uh, complete visibility from single point of management. So imagine you have multiple switches managed by the Podigate firewall and uh, uh, and uh, your access layer managed by the Podigate firewall. But any endpoint connected behind the access layer, it, with one single click, you would know that the, uh, the client or the device connected uh, on where it is connected on, on the network or which SSID or which access point or which switch port. All right, so. <clears throat> You can see my logical topology here, uh, and I can see number of devices. Uh, I also, uh, I have one of the Cisco switch uh, connected to the 40 gate firewall. So 40 gate is able to discover uh, the device type, which is a uh, PoE enabled switch behind uh, behind the 40 gate firewall, uh, along with the uh, uh, with the iOS version and the 40 switch for. Uh, uh, 40 switch model information. Sorry, uh, it's a Cisco switch information. So uh, includes the Cisco switch model, the port uh, information, and uh, uh, the IOS are uh, running on on this uh, uh, switch. So if there are no questions, I will quickly move on to uh, a controller based platform. So now I have also added uh, our WLC controller. 
So uh, as I told you during my presentation, 40, uh, 40 gate can, uh, 40 WLC, 40 net wireless line controller can integrate uh, with 40 gate or uh, security fabric. So let's quickly log on to the wireless line controller. Uh, this is my dashboard or dashboard of a controller once you log into the uh, uh, 40 gate wireless line controller. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, from uh, it gives a complete uh, uh, end to end information from dashboard itself, uh, uh, knowing about, uh, for instance, the number of access points online, the number of APs offline, the number of clients connected here. Uh, you can see the throughput uh, uh, or the total uh, uh, aggregated tra traffic generated uh, uh, seen on, on the controller and then uh, the station distribution then uh, uh, you know based on the band based on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and if you see if there are any critical alarm generated by the controller the number of stations or clients connected to the respective uh, uh, SSID this is basically the distribution of your SSID and then we also have the band distribution so you can see uh, majority of devices connected to the wireless and controller or, or on 5 gigahertz band only. So I have either 11N or 11AC devices. Then it also does the device fingerprinting to know what type of OS uh, you're running or what kind of uh, device. So we know it's an ITIL uh, running uh, iOS with so and so version. So we, we know that uh, we, are, we are doing the DSCP device fingerprinting here uh, so to get to know about that information. So moving on to uh, uh, additional information, like for example, to gain visibility, we, uh, you have complete, uh, uh, you know, detailed radio uh, uh, distribution dashboard, which allows you to see number of association based on the radio. If you want to get into the details, always right, uh, you, you you can choose by clicking right click and uh, say uh, select show. So this will give you the count, the interface index, uh, uh, you know, or interface uh, index and the AP uh, mo uh, name or AP uh, ID information and you can always open and do the diagnostic here. So, uh, you know, detailed uh, information like ch about channel, your radio channel utilization, um, your, uh, you know, uh, or, or retry count. So looks, uh, the health looks to be good here. Uh, I don't see a lot of retries or de-association or any, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a large uh, uh, heavily interference on, on the network. Then we have uh, different stations here, uh, uh, station dashboard or station distribution dashboard from there. If you want to get into any specific device, you want to see the logs about the respective device, you can always go back and open and do the diagnostics of the device. I can run that. At the moment you open that, it started running. So uh, you're going to see the backend logs. Uh, uh, if, if a client is association, you want to troubleshoot that. Uh, client, you can always put the Mac of that uh, station where it is connecting and then you can uh, I mean, you can start uh, scan uh, uh, troubleshooting with that endpoint. And if there are any voice association or voice uh, calls, uh, uh, basically determining uh, any any SIP traffic on the controller, it, it will showcase. Currently, I don't have any SIP client, so we don't see this here. Uh, in terms of uh, you know, uh, on a high level, you have a detail, very detailed dashboard with knowing a lot of other information like diagnostic uh, uh, device information, all the stations, wireless access points, wired. Uh, devices, <clears throat> rogue devices, so on. Uh, um, so uh, on a high level, uh, you know, basically you have uh, for a controller is distributed into four main tabs. Uh, uh, monitor will give you complete monitoring of your controller, including uh, top 10 stations, top 10 uh, access points that are generating traffic or top 10, uh, uh, you know, problem stations. So you can uh, basically get that information and or get uh, get uh, the logs when you have to, uh, too many clients connected <clears throat> and then uh, moving on to so this is basically the monitor will give you complete a monitoring tab here to so anything that you want to search or do the deep analysis about uh, you know any issue you could do that from here you could do the monitoring from uh, uh, monitor tab then moving on any configuration that you will require or you want to introduce any configuration, we can do that configuration from here, configuration tab. So com configuration can be done in a in a various uh, uh, steps, basically by introducing a VLAN, adding a security, uh, adding a ESS ID, uh, a container, then introducing a radius uh, uh, server or integrating with radius server, captive portal, depending on if you want to use external captive portal or you would like to use internal captive portal or if there are timer profiles, depending on 
uh, you know if you want to uh, create access uh, 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 user access or ssid uh, uh, access based on the timer plan for instance you want to uh, broadcast the ssid uh, within a specific given time for, for instance 8 to 2 pm morning 8 to 2 pm so autumn uh, the ssid or the service is available only during the time frame that you define or the profile that you create or let's say uh, the profile where you you don't want to uh, 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 allow the services ssid uh, service during uh, you know weekend on friday and saturday so you could create a timer profile and uh, uh, you can add the day and time uh, start time end time uh, all that information or you want to do this on a periodic basis you can select that uh, here the interval here, time intervals here we can do ap grouping depending on uh, you know if you want to map the aps to a uh, floor or to a building to a block so it's basically uh, a, a mapping depending on uh, what what customer is looking for or what is your use case uh, and uh, moving on to the security again if, if you see the security we do have uh, we do support all the enterprise grade uh, security uh, protocols uh, so we you can see uh, uh, wpa2 wpa3 here um, that can be, uh, you know, a SSID or a, a SSID that you are broadcasting or ESSID that can be mapped to the security profile that you define here on the controller. So uh, this was a quick one. And then you can also have a rogue AP. So you, you can see there are no licenses here. The, all the features like rogue AP detection, uh, your quality of service uh, on a wi wireless network. If you, if you are doing any such configuration or using a, a VIP sensor, we, we don't need any licensing or all the features are fully loaded on, on a controller. So uh, we, we can introduce uh, AP, we can map the access point here and uh, we, we can do rogue AP detection. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so in a nutshell, this is, uh, a, uh, this is a tab where you do complete configuration of a controller. There are uh, uh different uh, you know use cases or there could be um, uh, you know uh, 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 different user configuration and moving on to uh, one of the point uh, we were discussing about a single uh, uh, virtual a single channel and virtual cell so single channel virtual cell deploying APs on a same channel uh, so one of the example here uh, just to explain you how it works the APs are placed in the same channel. If I go back and refer to the SSID or the BSSID that we are broad, broadcasting, uh, will will be same on on the same uh, on the same series of access point. So basically, I am running virtual cell at this moment with only uh, uh, 300 CD, uh, th three to one um, uh, access point, a universal three to one uh, e AP model. So I'll go back to the ESSID. So let's say we have a profile for 11 AC wave to access point. So if you see the 11 AC wave to access point, you can see the BSS ID is same. Yeah, this AP, uh, one of the radio for this AP was configured in a scanning, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the same way you can convert the radio sensor in a scanning mode, the rogue scanning mode or spectrum uh, scanning mode. So you, you can use the, um, uh, uh, basically the radio um, uh, for service mode or you can use them uh, in, in uh, that radio to be converted as a, as a um, rogue scanner or a spectrum scanner. Yeah. So moving on to, uh, you know, maintenance tab, uh, it's basically in case, uh, you know, if you're running the uh, 40, uh, 40 uh, wireless LAN controller on a VM platform. So that requires uh, uh, a, a license for, uh, I mean, it's only one license uh, uh, that uh, activates against your controller model. There's no license for AP mod uh, uh, to support number of access points. It's basically only one license. So we can quickly see here, this is my, uh, FWC 50 uh, VM controller license. Uh, so, uh, in, in case if you are, in case you are running VM platform, you will require a license that needs to be activated against the controller model. 
so uh, uh, you know uh, other than that uh, you could do the uh, maintenance uh, tab or you know, if you want to do uh, a file management for, for example if you want to upgrade the sd version on a controller or or to the access points you could do that from here if you need to run any script uh, on a access point uh, to tweak the parameters uh, on on the APs, we, we could always write a script and push the script to the access point and just reboot the AP for to apply the configuration changes. And uh, wizard, uh, you know, if this is a, a quick, uh, easy wizard. Uh, for instance, if you are doing the setup for for the first time, actually, if, uh, you can go through the easy setup that that will allow you to uh, uh, do the bas basic initial configuration, set the country code. Uh, the a APs that are connected will be discovered automatically. You could choose the channels here. You can define the service uh, to the controller, and once you are done with everything, just do a reboot. Instead of navigating through multiple tabs, you could go through the easy setup and uh, you know follow the process. And uh, 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 and but but this requires a reboot. So if you are doing this for the first time, uh, you can do that initial setup, apply the uh, basic configuration connected discover the APs, uh, configure the channels, and uh, then you go for a reboot. Yeah, that was uh, uh, on a high level uh, uh, from a controller point of view. Any questions, guys, anything uh, specific that uh, uh, you would like to see on controller or any questions on controller platform? All right, so no, we can, no. yeah, Ravi. No, I don't know. I don't know. There is any question. All right, okay. So let's quickly move on to uh, one moment. Let's move on to the uh, 40 AP cloud management. And same time, we can see uh, the other option. Of managing uh, 40 switches or, or 40 switch or 40 cloud. So let me quickly log in. So now you can manage uh, your cloud uh, uh, management from uh, you know one, uh, 40 uh, 40 nets one account where your other platforms like uh, other cloud services are mapped within uh, one uh, support portal uh, login account. So um, uh, le let's say if you want to do the 40 AP management, 40 extender, or 40 switch management over cloud platforms, you could directly log into your. Con uh, 40 net uh, support portal and you can directly ac access or gain access to these platforms. So let me quickly move on to the 40 switch, 40, 40 AP uh, management, cloud management. So 40 AP cloud management, uh, you need to choose the uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, cloud, uh, I mean, at the data center, basically we have uh, one hosted for Europe and one, uh, a, one of the uh, global uh, 40 cloud uh, uh, 
data center so i'll, I'll quickly connect to the uh, global one All right, so you can see uh, currently there are two access points which are, are, are two APs that they are uh, due for, uh, you know, uh, uh, due for authorization or due to deploy. So right now you can see there are two APs, uh, FAPU 24J and FAP 321C. Uh, so uh, uh, basically if you want to onboard or you want to manage the AP from 40 cloud management, there are various options. One of the option, if you want to do it, you could do it yourself manually by adding a cloud key uh, uh, from the access point. So uh, every access point that we ship has a, cl a cloud key label on, uh, you know, on the back side or front side of the AP. So uh, um, the old APs are on the front side, I, uh, I believe. The new APs, the, the current generation access point, you will find the 40 cloud key on, on the back side. Uh, you know near to that uh, serial number information on 40 AP model information so you you can actually just import that cloud key uh, here and uh, once you import the AP will be discovered here and they wait, uh, it waits for your um, you know option to deploy so whether you want to deploy this AP if I select the deploy here the I you will find two options for deployment deployment to the 40 cloud which, which means you you want to deploy the APs through the 40 cloud management the other option would be if you are using 40 manager, a centralized 40 manager, then you can map this AP or push this AP to or, uh, or reroute this AP to be managed through the or discovered through the centralized uh, management platform. So you have a choice. So if you are doing that, if you want to do or you're willing to do the cloud management, then go with the option uh, deploy to 40 AP cloud. So once you do this, the AP will be deployed uh, uh, under your account. So once the deploy, uh, AP is deployed, you're going to see the deployed APs here. Additionally, I want to see you, uh, show you other option of, uh, sorry, yeah. So let me go back to the switch. Switch ports. So let's search that AP. Yeah. Thirty dot eleven. Okay. Let me access this AP. Okay, I know why this is not working. Okay, uh, any, anyway, so the other option would be, uh, you know, I, I need to change my network if I have to connect that AP. Uh, I, I don't want to do that. But you you have the other option where, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, from AP also, you could actually choose the cloud option and uh, pr provision your cloud credentials, your cloud user account information and password. So once you, uh, 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 have this information but make sure that you choose the right uh, uh, data center i mean uh, the url you need to provide the uh, uh, 40 cloud uh, uh, 40 cloud uh, or 40 cloud controller url so you need to pro provision this url and provide your user credentials on the access point so once the ap is connected to the uh, internet the the ap is out, uh, is going to be discovered under your account Okay, the, uh, so in, in my case, this AP, uh, I have put my user credentials on the access point. I have not added this AP manually. So these APs are discovered, uh, you know, uh, or they are connected through my account. So once the AP deployment is done, now I'll quickly move to the, uh, uh, you know, configuration options that, that are available from a cloud, cloud management product. So th this is one, you're, you're going to deploy them and uh, as a part of process. So uh, just select the deployment option. Uh, deploy to the cloud ap so I'm, I'm doing that now going ahead with that now it says add to the network i don't have a network i'm going to create a network add a ap to 40 ap to the network so now uh, let's do it only for one so not to be confused 
what I okay now the plug is AP I'm adding a network so let's add a key u 24j or select the country time zone and select Saudi Arabia so submit that now I'm the coin visit Why this access is then on? Oh, the AP is still in the inventory. It is not. Uh, Let me try with this AP. Okay, let me map. Not sure if I gave the URL for other one. So let me go back if I'm able to see that AP here. Oh, okay, that profile is created here. Right. Okay. okay I will see that uh, why it is rejecting but meanwhile I'll quickly go back to the profile that we created just to show you what settings are there okay so this this is the 40 uh, cloud AP profile that you created now if once you go inside the 40 AP cloud profile Okay, so you can see there is no SSID configured. So this is my container or, or you can say, uh, you know, a profile. Uh, for This can be in case if you are managing multiple locations, multiple sites, this can be one of the identifier or a container. Uh, for instance, instead of using 40 cloud here, I, I can use uh, a branch name, maybe, uh, you know, one of the branch location in Riyadh, Jeddah, Kuber. So I can have multiple profiles, whereas, you have different profiles or different AP models or different configuration with respect to different uh, uh, container or different uh, um, uh, and different 40 AP uh, uh, network profile here. So moving on to, uh, uh, you know, moving on to the configuration. So once you are done with that, now we can quickly come back to the configurations view here. And in configuration, now we are going to add the SSID. So it's a similar configuration. So you, you can create your SSID that you want to uh, want to broadcast. Uh, if, uh, you, you have other options, like if you want to enable Mac-based authentication, you want to create a mesh profile. Uh, similarly, authentication protocols, like you, you can see, uh, you know, WPA2, WPA2 uh, personal enterprise and uh, WPA3 protocols. 
uh, or open ssid you, you we can also introduce a captive portal captive portal we have, you have multiple options like there is a built-in captive portal on 40 uh, 40 cloud itself so you can use the built-in 40 cloud captive portal or you want to use external captive portal or my captive portal you need to provide that url uh, and make sure that uh, you know you're, you are able to reach that url uh, uh, for redirection purpose so uh, you you could have multiple options or you can say no captive portal so if i use uh, 40 cloud captive portal then uh, in terms of uh, sign on uh, method so here we can choose so you can integrate with backend radius server right now i don't have a radius server integration and uh, integrated to my account but you can introduce that here or other options like uh, if you want to do uh, 40 cloud users and groups so it, this means you can have your own user and group database uh, for user authentication so take take an example i can have a user groups for, for instance if you're deploying this ap uh, for a small smp customer so maybe they have two different type of network a, a group of users who are internal users a group of users who are guest user so we, we can always create a different profiling or within that you if you want to have a group with a with a naming or uh, you know or uh, uh, which is reflecting your department i can have a department or based on contractor user different use case you can have uh, you know different user group created or assigned here and then uh, if you allow self-registration so self-registration we can have uh, uh, guest user self-registration capture portal page and for example let's create this one secure access now <clears throat> with self-registration uh, or if you want to integrate with social media platform so you can also introduce social media platforms here so let's see the difference here when i choose social media platform or uh, self-registration portal okay and uh, if, uh, to answer uh, your question, these features are, uh, you know, the capture portal and other features are uh, uh, are with no extra license. But additional features are advanced features. The one I was referring to uh, earlier, which are license-based feature. You need to have a license to enable below, uh, you know, uh, uh, functionality. For instance, if you want to tweak uh, uh, or have customized uh, data rate so this this requires a license uh, or advanced ap management license on your uh, account so once you have this license you you will be able to tweak or you want to reduce the data rates uh, uh, you know you, you could do that so uh, i'm <clears throat> just ignoring that moving on to next uh, in case you you have uh, remember we we also have smart access point uh, where you will require a uh, 40 guard subscription we can have 40 guard subscription here we can create profile so there are more than 3500 uh, uh, you know application uh, uh, signatures built in so you can say on a very detail you can tell what is allowed what is not allowed you can create you can have custom profile if you want to block peer, uh, peer application uh, or you want to block gambling uh, applications on on the wireless network so you you could do that uh, uh, you know uh, 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 uh in a very detailed way the way uh, and then you can configure intrusion prevention you can uh, prevent wireless users against botnet attack so web filtering is one of the thing you can uh, enable and uh, apply the policy for web filtering for different group of users so there are, these are some examples of what, what you could do from a cloud management so i i will i'm going to ignore these all uh, and then move on to the next availability so uh, this is where you can control the client client count uh, for example you don't want um, too many devices to be connected to an endpoint so i can say that okay to an access point or to a radio of an access point so i can set the limit of 10 so when you set the limit of, to 10 the maximum association to this ap uh, radio at 2.4 will be maximum 10 at 5 gigahertz respectively you can define the count uh, what is allowed count you can tell okay so example i'll set this to 10 okay now next you want to uh, you know broadcast or you want to skip this uh, ssid broadcast between a time from 8 a.m to 6 p.m or on a um, or during only weekdays considering uh, excluding your weekends or you can always have a custom profile so you can always do that so i'll say always now next if i move to the next portal 
you have a nice captive order where, where since we, we selected social media platform the social media platform uh, will allow you to authenticate your guest users against social media platforms like uh, my facebook uh, your twitter account linkedin or we can authenticate them against uh, google plus and you have a background logo if you are deploying this for a customer you want to change uh, you know this uh, background image i can always do that let me quickly go to the desktop find a screenshot okay i found this and so you can see uh, i just uploaded an image so uh, you can have a custom captive portal i mean uh, on the back end you can replace this logo or image uh, for your customer or you can replace it with your customer logo here and uh, once i say next uh, it, it will apply the policy uh, it will create the uh, profile so now let's go back to the other option and look explore the options of self-registration see the options of self-registration so social media instead of social media we are enabling self-registration guest portal next next So on self-registration portal, you can have uh, you know a customized uh, tab like for, for instance, okay, the, the information that we are capturing during self-registration uh, um, process, you can initially the you know you, uh, user um, basically it will use your mobile number as a username here for authentication purpose, or you can have option for uh, randomly generated user account and send via SMS or via email. So we, you can have multiple options here uh, with the self-registration tab. I, again, this is a, uh, uh, if you want to enable or edit this or customize, you, you could do that also. Okay. <clears throat> oh, all right. So right now I can see there are two APs, uh, you know, under my profile. So there, there are two access points that uh, that are added to this platform, this AP platform. Okay, so going back to the cloud uh, user uh, groups, you can find, uh, you know, uh, you can have different user groups. For, for instance, I can have a user group based on the uh, user role uh, uh, here. So I can have a guest user and map them to the respective uh, uh, segment of your network or map it to the respective VLAN. So uh, if you see here, uh, you know, from a cl cloud AP management point of view or cloud uh, AP management over 40 cloud has all the enterprise grade features, uh, including your uh, integration with your radio server, introducing uh, captive portal, uh, having self-registration, in uh, authenticating against your, um, um, uh, against the, you know, local database on 40 cloud or social media platform. So uh, there, there could be, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's basically AP management from a, um, a centralized management capability and uh, onboarding process. You have very rich features uh, when you are managing the body AP through cloud platform. And uh, one of the point, if you remember, uh, we also have body presence integration. So uh, there is a built-in tab. You can select body presence integration. You need to have. Uh, you know your project uh, name and your secret uh, information and map it map it to the your uh, 40 uh, uh, presence cloud uh, uh, cloud ip address so you need to do that mapping here so once you do that and uh, you can add uh, aps to the you you can uh, you you are going to see these aps on 40 uh, presence and then you can map the aps to the respective location you can import the floor plans you can place the uh, ap's physical location so so on i mean uh, i mean you could do almost all uh, and uh, also oh, we have introduced uh, a tunneling uh, profile so in this tunneling profile you can uh, deploy the ap on the cloud but the user traffic can be tunneled back uh, using your uh, uh, layer 2 tunneling or gre tunneling so uh, let's say you have one of the vpn device configured with a, a configured as a layer 2 uh, gre tunnel uh, 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 we need the uh, tunnel uh, IP address here, the interface IP, and all your traffic is forwarded to the uh, tunnel uh, uh, IP that you provided. So we, we can uh, support both options, GRE and um, um, layer two tunnel. Uh, I mean, this could be one of the use cases where your guest, uh, where your 
teleworkers wants to work from home but their traffic needs to be uh, forwarded to the corporate uh, terminal so uh, th this could be one of the thing and all their traffic user traffic will go through a uh, uh, through this centralized uh, gra tunnel even the user internet traffic will go through the centralized uh, uh, tunnel all right so we will move on to uh, 40 camera uh, and then uh, we will see 40 wise uh, uh, management console see uh, ravi if you miss the 40 cloud key uh, the option other option i told you you can log into the uh, 40 ap uh, uh, and you can uh, choose the mode of management of that access point via cloud provide the cloud url and uh, you can also give your credentials uh, like uh, your 40 cloud account credentials login information so once you provision your account uh, information this ap will be automatically discovered under your account so once it is connected to the internet this ap is registered under your 40 cloud account and yes the other option would be you you can definitely contact uh, for the net support all right i uh, we can start with 40 voice since uh, 40 recorder is uh, taking time to download here or to show the screen so let's start with uh, 40 voice so you, you could see that uh, i've logged into the 40 voice dashboard uh, uh, it's a very uh, you know uh, user friendly and uh, 40 voice dashboard I, i'm sure the partners who is uh, 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 partners who has already worked on 40 gate firewall they are going to have the same look and feel it's same for customers who has uh, already hands on on 40 gate so they are going to have a, a same look and feel so uh, this 40 voice deployment you can see the model 40 voice which is currently deployed on a vm platform uh, and moving on to the license information i have a 200 uh, 40 voice vm license in uh, a license loaded uh, on this box we have hotel management license to support up to 30 uh, uh, you know rooms or 30 packs there is also a 30 uh, user license for uh, agents basically call center agents for, for a call center setup additionally we have 30 user license uh, or soft client license for 30 users so soft client license is required so uh, 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 soft client license is required when you want to register your SIP extension or when you want to use uh, our 40 voice application on uh, uh, on uh, on different device platforms like on on ios or windows or linux or uh, mac so on so uh, that requires a license on 40 voice so that's about the voice information from dashboard you can see uh, uh, you know the number of uh, uh, calls or or the uh, recent recent call activity when was the recent call done from which extension it was done to which number it was made so you're going to see that information 
Additionally, you know, it's, again, this is customizable dashboard. If you want to add any additional widgets in terms of management, you can always go back and select what information you want to add here, uh, which is important or more relevant to your monitoring for your man uh, monitoring purpose. Uh, then we can also have uh, the call statistics uh, from here. Uh, so it's mainly depending on the day by month, uh, you know, the distribution or, or the detail calling. Uh, the number of incoming calls number of outgoing calls based on hour basis daily basis monthly basis so we, we don't have much flow on this then moving on to the console you can always connect to the cli from here now uh, you know the, if i go back to the system these are uh, on a high level it's a similar uh, th uh, 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 configurations on an interface so how you want to route your traffic the port configuration here management ip you, you can also use dhcp server or 40 voice tracked as a DSCP server where your phones will obtain IP address from 40 voice uh, DSCP server itself. Okay. Or, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and you also have tra traffic capture for troubleshooting purpose. You have routing here. Then moving on to uh, uh, other other things like, uh, you know, uh, gateway. So uh, remember, we have different type of gateways. We have FXO gateway, we have FXS gateway, or we have uh, the PRI gateway. So in this case, uh, when you have uh, gateways, we don't need to log into the gateway or manage them in a standalone mode. Basically, when you connect a gateway, uh, uh, it, uh, it will automatically discover or, or we can always fetch the information about that gateway. Uh, so uh, I, I don't have the privilege, but you, if you have, uh, you know, in your setup, you can always add a manageable gateway, create that, add, uh, add the IP address of that. And once you fetch, click on the fetch information, it is going to uh, get all the information about the interface, the type of gateway, uh, and uh, you know uh, the wo uh, software version that you are running on the gateway. Uh, so all, all that information will be pulled out from the device. Additionally, you can do complete management and administration of that gateway from Forty Voice itself. So, uh, for example, if you are creating calls or, or you want to do the call distribution or call forwarding or routing uh, from uh, you know different gateways. So, for for, in, for example. Uh, you you want to use all your local calls or uh, uh, through the FXO gateway. So we can uh, have a uh, call routing configured to route all your local calls uh, uh, routed through the uh, um, uh, routed through FXO gateway. Whereas if you want to make a national and international call routing through PRI gateway, so you can define that routing here. You can have those gateways managed by uh, our our forty voice IP PBAs. Additionally, uh, these gateways can be managed from 40 wise. They work with 40 wise. Uh, or, or also, you can position 40 wise gateway with third party products. For example, if you have a customer who has uh, a PBX from Avaya or who has a PBX from Mitre or any third party uh, IP PBX, but they are looking or they are in a need of a gateway uh, to connect, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a FXO lines or uh, possibly they want to, uh, you know, they are, they are in a process of obtaining PRA lines. They need a PRI gateway, so you can always introduce 40 voice gateways, or you can. Uh, th there is no dependency on 40 voice. You can sell our gateways, uh, uh, you know, in, in, uh, with other other solutions or other platforms. Uh, and uh, firmware upgrade uh, can be done from here. We can have a centralized firmware upgrade. That means I, I if that based on the type of 40 phone models that you are managing, you can import the firmware here, and you can schedule or. Uh, you can push the upgrade of uh, 40 phone upgrade from here. Then, uh, you know, the, the there is an integration with uh, to protect you against the IPS attacks uh, or CPI IPS uh, attacks, uh, you know, intrusion uh, detection attacks. So th that can also be configured here. Uh, or there are, uh, you know, some fake numbers that uh, you get called. So those numbers uh, can also be blocked uh, by, uh, you know, looking into the IPS database or uh, the block number uh, uh, d database from for, by receiving that from uh, 40 guard services that can also be blocked here. Now moving on to the extensions, you this is where uh, you actually create an extension. There are different uh, various ways of doing it. One way of uh, cre uh, creating extension, you can uh, always assign uh, a, a phone with an extension. For a, for example, a phone which is already connected uh, to the IPPBX, which is discovered by uh, your PBX, you can always right click and uh, say edit and assign extension, or, or you can always click on new and create a new extension here. And from uh, 
uh, when while creating you need to select the type of phone so uh, for example if you are using 40 phone what is the model of that phone so I, if i click here uh, you know it will list me the different type of phones that we have or uh, uh, the phones that 40 voice uh, carries in it, uh, on its product uh, portfolio so we have different phone models here i can select that there are some uh, third party phones also you can see which is tested so for example this cisco phones the that uh, that has been tested uh, okay so you can use third party uh, phones as well uh, to to work with our ipvx so uh, uh, you know but that depends on uh, you know what set of features uh, uh, uh are working uh, as uh, uh, it, it works uh, for sure as long as uh, you know you're only concerned about uh, uh sip clients yes you can register as a, a sip a generic sip client and that works uh, to make a call or, or to receive a call uh, additionally you can have uh, you know soft phone agent configured here if you're assigning same extension to a uh, to a soft client you can map that here and if you are introducing a call center we can also map this extension for a call center so uh, all you need to do is just allow this user to be registered under call center uh, uh, you know my extension uh, and and we can also have different user privileges i can have different user groups for example uh, uh, operator group you can have hotel group making for hotel for hospitality customers making long distance call or customers with uh, you know allowed only with local calls or we can have a password protected uh, privilege where uh, you can dial in uh, you know you can pick up the line dial the number and then we have to uh, uh, also uh, uh, provide the dialing code or a key that allows you to uh, you know uh, make a call so we, we can have password protected uh, uh, privilege also here so different privilege levels we can define um, on on the pdf So uh, we can configure uh, white trunks here. Uh, we, we, you can also office peer is where uh, if, if you have some third party, uh, you know, uh, take the use case where you have some, uh, you know, you are introducing 40 voice to a existing Avaya customer or Mitel customer or any uh, third party IPBBX customer where you want to integrate uh, um, uh, these two PBX or have SIP trunks between uh, uh, be between two um, IP PBX, so you can route calls uh, uh, between two PBX uh, uh, or IP. So that can be done, and we can have uh, you can also define um, inbound and outbound uh, routing uh, policies here, uh, and we can also do the DID mapping uh, and and office peer uh, configuration for inbound. So uh, we, we you can also create a policy for office peer or your branch location calls incoming calls same way we can do that for out, outbound also and one point uh, here when we refer to the gateway uh, let's say if, if you have a distributed architect where customer has got multiple sites uh, and and they want to have a centralized ipvbx then you can have a centralized ipvbx deployed and but they register all their sip uh, extensions uh, or all the user uh, user desk phone is registered to the centralized ipvbx but here same time if you have uh, you know call routing that needs to be done uh, through the local uh, you know local gateway for example in one of the branch you have some traditional lines and you want to route that branch location calls through that local traditional lines then we can have the gateway installed in a remote location and you could still do the call routing from uh, uh, for for the uh, for the local or for the branch extensions uh, and that would allow their call to be routed uh, or their calls to be routed from uh, the from the uh, fxo line okay so uh, it's again uh, you know when it comes to configuration or on offering solution wise uh, we do have uh, uh, you know uh, all the set of features and functionalities that you're looking in a ipvbx uh, and uh, we ha we do have call center you can see the call, call queue uh, you know uh, we can have queue groups uh, again separately you can have uh, the agent uh, uh, user agent created assigning an extension to that user from here we can have uh, ivr uh, you know or you can even integrate with the uh, rest api that means i can have this uh, integrated to third party to play any uh, audio from uh, third party platform okay uh, and then you can you can also set up the survey for example uh, you know survey from your call uh, 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 to see the quality of service uh, of your 
agents so we you can you could enable survey uh, on on the ipvbx itself so uh, uh, when you see the advanced features like uh, additionally in addition to the uh, sip extensions or call recording or uh, you know uh, or uh, having this uh, uh, what do you call uh, the survey features or uh, ivr functionality uh, or auto answer auto attendant all these advanced features which any other or most of the uh, enterprise grade PBX requires a license to enable that features, right? So we, we don't read any P, uh, licensing on, on the PBX for that. So advanced features like call recording, uh, call forwarding, call, um, uh, you know, um, uh, or auto attendant, all those features are fully loaded uh, on, on the box uh, and does not require any additional licensing for that. And you can have uh, also a built-in reporting. There is no uh, uh need of uh, you know uh, license again to enable a reporting uh, on i uh, on our pbx and you can have this hotel management uh, uh, integration uh, you can uh, map it to the status of minibar status of your room out of uh, uh, you know uh, um, uh, a, di a different status uh, that you want to define different uh, uh, again privilege uh, access to that room guest room so guest room conditions if i go to the guest room conditions you can see uh, uh, you can map that to the uh, guest room uh, you know con condition for instance it is due for uh, housekeeping uh, team to look after or uh, you know wake up call or uh, check out check in so you can uh, you know or the room is clean or dirty so de de depending on different status we you can map that status here to a pbs Okay, you can see the other uh, call features like uh, auto attended speed dial, conferencing, call recording, call parking, fax, reminder, or, uh, you know, feature code. All, all these features, these are uh, usually uh, treated as advanced features in other PBX. So all these features are fully loaded on, on, the, on the PBX itself. And then you have uh, the call uh, report uh, uh, feature here called report, reporting and CDR, SMDR. If you want to integrate with the uh, third-party backend uh, centralized uh, reporting server, then we can also do that as well. So you, you need that uh, device to uh, you know, support SMD, uh, SMDR uh, uh, format. Now, quickly to move on, uh, any questions on 40 wise anything related on 40 wise so uh team i think if there is nothing else uh, to discuss i think we can conclude the session i would like to thank rafiq for making time and uh, coming out and uh, hosting the session for us thank you so much rafiq i appreciate and i would like to thank uh, all the partners uh, uh, and I really appreciate for their time uh, uh, they invested being with us uh, during the session thank you guys Thank you. Thank you, everyone.